Hello, friends, and welcome to an unexpected podcast. I'm Ez. And I'm Lane. And we're talking Tolkien. We're coming to you from the Shire of America, the beautiful state of Ohio, in a little village called Mander. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week, we are getting some exercise as we cover the King of the Golden Hall as a part of our journey through Middle Earth. Exercise your demon. It's going to get real serious later on. But before we get serious, that's right. We're here. Yeah. We're clear. Yep. And we're hanging out with Gold Beer. Yeah. Does Hello. That make sense? Oh my. <laughs> Listen to that golden voice. Just uh, come on, say something. It's. I mean, it's not 3 a.m., so I am awake oh, right man. now. I just want to go collect oh. some water lilies for. Her. I know. Isn't it? I'm really nervous. I have to tell you. I know. Why are you nervous? Um, I don't know. I'm really sweaty and like uncomfortable <laughs> because I can hear myself talking. <laughs> Uh, and I know you have awesome listeners, and I don't want to let them down, you know? But I don't think they're going to be let down. I think you're giving them exactly what they want. Well, Our hello, everyone. I'm included. glad you are here. Yes. yes. No, it is It is honestly really... We've been wanting to get Goldberry on yep. the podcast for a little we've bit. We've had that so. tease where she did the this episode of is yeah. brought to you by, but that's not enough, Oh, guys. you put that in? I did. <clears throat> we told... See, I... Is that a white lie? I told her I wasn't going to, but we did. Did we tell her that? I don't think yeah. I... No, did I say I didn't? like, let's I don't just record lie. it, and then we'll have it, and we won't use it. Oh, that's yeah. treacherous, Ezra. I said that. I'm I sorry, I think I had bro. been asleep, and I woke up, and I came <laughs> down here, probably for <laughs> a pop-tart. Can you do tart. this real quick? Yeah, that Ezra like, bought literally, you probably. I, I think it was like one in the morning, and we said, hey, we need your voice now. Yes. That's I, so anyways, terrible. Anyways, I'm here. Yeah. Glad so to be here. We just... We, we wanted to uh, bring Goldberry on for quick counsel here. We're actually... um. Starting something new on our Patreon uh, series, we're doing um, uh, premier premium. I can't <laughs> premier <laughs> theaters in Mount Vernon, Ohio. <laughs> Just head there and have a good time. You want me um, to try this one? Yeah, go for it. Pre- we have premium Patreon profiles. That's actually the only item in our table of contents, and that's with Goldberry. So that's coming up uh, in a little bit, actually. Yeah. Uh, the gist of that is, well, I think I explain it later on, but uh, we sent out questions. Our patrons responded, and Goldberry goes through them. Yeah, she it's crafted great. them down in the in the valley of the Withy Window. What did you do to craft these up. questions? These are some, you know, you got to the core of just talking on the mic, hon. You know, he keeps pointing the mic at me like I'm a ding dong. I know. No, I just want the oh, your you voice know, to be captured. I, it just came from the spirit and the soul. Yeah. I don't know. Right, of Tolkien or you or or um, both? A little bit of both. Yeah, there's wow. some personal questions. There's some Middle Earth related questions. Wait, what were you doing with Tolkien Spirit? <laughs> well, hey, so okay. so my question is, so like Goldberry's going in, right? Okay, and she's is like extracting, God knows what. So like yeah. we've got a like an array of questions. Yes, they pick three. You can reply to all of them, and then we're gonna pick the ones we want to kind of talk about. Them. Yeah, that's Actually, right. Goldberry will, and uh, and then yeah, we kind of highlight some of our our you know. Some of our members of our book club. Get to know each other better. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. So anyways. Um, uh, some quick counsel, yeah? Yeah, quick counsel, my friend. Ezra, how you doing, bud? Uh, well, I told you guys that I recently discovered... I, I, I'm, I'm a new man. Dude, you, a weight has been lifted off your chest. <laughs> I can completely relate. Quite literally. I cannot believe, guys. Okay, so... Yeah, this is something you guys have in common. We do. Full disclosure here. I had like a little bit of a... Uh, I was feeling some some like chest pain and I was a little like, bit you had a health scare for about eight months the last yeah <laughs> eight months as long as this podcast, this podcast has been going on as long as this podcast has been happening yes. guys and it was like back in January and I was like and it wasn't bad but I was like maybe I tweaked my pack because I was working out you know I was you know, getting those clean you know getting that uh, that press in there and I really thought that I tweaked my pectoral and it is right, my back dang it. <laughs> it it turns out so I went, you know, I go in and then, then you start worrying because you're like, oh man, you know, like, uh, uh, is it something to do with my heart? Is mm-hmm. it something to do with something else? You had blood work done. My blood esophagus. work came back normal. Yeah. Remember, and okay, yeah everything, a few months ago. Right. And I'm sitting here thinking like, man, you know, I'm not like, I, I work out here and there. I'm not the healthiest. So I'm like, what is going on? I don't smoke, you know? Yeah. So what could it but be? But we were pounding those cherry Cokes. We were. Right and so no you look back, the pizza, the Chinese food that we had back in the, the day. Moist. Oh, the moist Chinese food. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Just a great time. That was one meal that I'll never forget, and I don't think we should oh, repeat, dude. to be honest with you. No, no, uh, no. We haven't, actually. We have not. It was so scarring, we have not repeated. We were sluggish, that, that oh, chapter. Gosh. Sluggish. Hey, we've had some clean meals from Goldberry, though. Yes, Goldberry, for a while, there was, was I got me into sweet potatoes. Yep. I was really uh, cooking. Hash. Remember right. that? Yes. Was this before I was pregnant? Yes. No. Yeah, I think Before so. you were pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, this was like, back in the spring. In, like, April, May. I think, oh, the yeah. second time. Yeah. Yeah. Crotch fruit number two. Number Correct. two. Sorry. Right. Okay. Right. 
So long story <laughs> short here, I figured out that the old uh, it it's acid reflux, guys. Yeah. Apparently, it's a I, everyone like five people brought that up to me. They said that's probably what it is, man. And I was like, really? You don't understand. Yes. And until you have it, you don't. You think it was just something you take with I times? Like, no, I was like, I've had I've had right. times where like it's been it could be because you ate spicy food or something crazy, and I know that I actually went nuts, you know, one night, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, oh, that's what that that's what that feels like. Well, this is different. Must have been that you were hitting that orc draft pretty hard for a while too. I was. So, just anyways, burning your throat down the line. I got one pill, took it for <laughs> two days ago, and literally, I woke up and I couldn't I couldn't believe the difference. Literally, could not believe the You're difference. You're a new man. So, I mean, I don't know. Do just, you take it every day? Yeah, I'm taking it every day because yep. I mean it feels amazing. Goldberry, I don't know. Sorry, about guys. You. That's my health. That's a quick no, no, update. No, no. I want to oh. keep commenting on this. Yeah, sure. I don't know about you, but I he has acted like a new person. Has he, he has, not? Yeah, you he, have a little more pep in your step. If, mm-hmm. if you if you wouldn't have told me what was what had happened, I'd have been like, I don't know. He just found out he won the lottery. Something's up. And you do like, feel you like garbage feel, when you have ass reflux going oh, on. Yeah. Gosh. That's eight months worth of just me going like, what is going on? Build up. Yeah. yeah, just discomfort. Just like, what the heck? You were turning into a dragon. It was nuts, In man. a real sense. I was breathing some <laughs> flames, man. All smog coming over here. You know? Uh, well, we are glad that you got it taken care of. That's, yeah, yeah. So now I want to know. So we had some that's pizza. That's the collective we. <laughs> right. Yeah. Th- thank you. Um, the royal we. Right. So how are you guys doing? You know? How, how are the Smiths? Awesome. Yeah. Doing great. Living in paradise. Had a great week. Yeah. Um, I had my first... Um, I didn't tell you this yet. I had my first like morning sickness bout. Oh, dude, since dude, we're on the is... conversation of health, I mean, sorry for everyone's <laughs> ears, but I'm sitting at school feeling a little, you know, my kids hadn't come yet. And yeah. I started to think, oh, my stomach's a little queasy and upset. And it has a, maybe five or six times with this baby. I've felt like I wanted to get sick, yeah. you know, usually in the car. And I try to, you know, if yeah. I can get a good, some gas out of my belly, some yeah. a good belch out. Yeah. I feel better. She is a world class belcher, by the way. <laughs> Isn't that gross? That's so gross. I mean, she puts those dwarves to That's shame. That's embarrassing. That's awesome. Um, but no, I end up like fire hose vomiting into my trash Big can. Big time dinosaurs, as what? my dad would say. Yes. Wow. Like, and then I felt immediately better. It was the most bizarre thing. But it's crazy. Um I got an email that says I just projectile vomited all over my trash can. <laughs> and I was like, I gotta go down and see this. So you check it I out. I usually just respond, you know, real quick. I was like, I'm taking a trip down to the K one pod and I'm yeah. seeing the damage. You're gonna have listeners I, that never want to invite me back. <laughs> I looked I'm into so, the, yeah. I looked in the trash can, she's like, Oh, it's buried under breakfast. Don't worry about it. I was like, Whoa. She but you said you felt incredible because we've been Last like week we ate we didn't eat the best. Correct. It's just it was we yeah, were yeah, tired, yeah. we're drained. A oh, lot's been going yeah. on. It's the so, time of year too. It's a time yeah, because we're yep. working up to Thanksgiving. It's a long haul actually. Yeah. So a lot of frozen food, a lot of yep. just stuff that we don't normally well, eat. Yeah, so Halloween, we were feeling we were feeling candy. To- yep. Yeah. We were feeling toxic. But and anyways, so, I feel much better. Yeah. When he, the baby's good. Everyone's good. Yeah. When he's awesome, walking, walking, she's guys, walking. You witnessed it. I got to see it today, and I was like, not like what? full on, but I mean, seven, eight steps, yeah, and and holding that balance, baby girls. I mean, she's really well, you know, she's gonna be in the determined. microphone here, guys, talking to you guys. I can't wait for real. So that's yeah. that's awesome. That's gross, yeah. but here I am, and that's that's me. That's what happened Sometimes with me you this get week. It out. Sometimes you have yeah. acid reflux. Sometimes you puke in the trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> People are just, like, wow, the health issues that well, are going on. Well, you know, right. we come upon our, 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 our King Theoden, and he's not in the best shape. No, he's not. That's right. So you That's know what? Right. I think it's just, again, real life being mirrored in, in had, the stories. Come on. I, yep. I, yeah. I mean, he had he, a sickness. Yes, he did. I guarantee he Look had some acid. Come breathe. You know, you know, when yes. you breathe that free air again, I'm sure it's exactly how you two feel right now. That's right. right. Yeah. So there you go. I love it. Okay. I'm doing fine, by the uh, way. Yeah. Hey, that's good. <laughs> he got me on the podcast, so... I'm I'm on cloud nine right now. Yeah, you're happy about that. I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, well, Gold, Goldberry, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. that's how he speaks. You got anything else you want to say? No. Are you thinking about starting a podcast yourself? No. You told them this last week, didn't you? I did. Did we? Someone did mentioned something. I don't know. Oh. They would like me to start a podcast, but you saw the first conversation I had was about my morning sickness. No Quick kindness with Sarah Smith. But that's real life. It is real life. It's and real I life. absolutely love it. And I think it's coming soon, just so everyone knows. And I just think we all need a little more kindness in yeah. our lives and yeah. just as much positivity as we can get. Right. I think I'm yeah. annoying. Po- like, I think I try. I, I'm annoying. Well, See, that's positive. annoying that you think that. It's annoying that you think that. Oh, annoyingly positive? Yeah, sometimes I think. I just well, doesn't the world need that? 
Dang I it. don't know. I mean, maybe they do. And I guarantee we can find a way to talk about it uh, and morning sickness all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm There's actually a lesson there. really excited. They're trying to finagle me to get into this podcast, but yeah. stay tuned. That Guys, word has never been used on this. Finagle? If we ever needed yeah. some peer pressure from you, it's now. Okay. So should we put out a poll, feel, guys? Feel free. The poll controls all. It really does. It really should does. Should she? Should she not? I don't so. know when I would record though. You guys are up. You do your thing late. You oh, do it first, we would go we even later. We would. <laughs> So I'd be up Lane, for the day. Lane just won't get any sleep ever. <laughs> you finish at 4 a.m., guys. Oh, man. No, but it, I mean, I have, you know, I have lots on my head, so maybe it would be a good idea. I don't know. We'll fun. see. Yes. That's I'm, I'm here. Sucked. Yep. We're, All right. Uh, okay, good. Okay, uh, Goldberry, you said you're going to go drop some Z's. Time, it's for time me to, to go drop rest. some Eves. Is that yeah, right? but but so. uh, we'll have her back. You know, she pops yeah. in and out from time to time, and That's so right. if we can catch her walking back through here, maybe she'll stop in and highlight one of our patrons for She's us. She's a busy river spirit, after yeah. all. Yeah. So, all thank right. you guys. Thanks, Goldie. Yep. Bye. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Time to get into some dropping some eaves. Uh, first up, the Amazon show. Uh, there is uh, a recent article that Screen Rant did talking to Vigo Mortensen and him offering some advice to Amazon's new cast. Uh, I'm not going to read it all here, but a few people have posted it up in the group. Uh, really kind of cool. Just talks about how he didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare. Uh, we know that because we're right. huge fans of Vigo and huge fans of the film. <clears throat> um, you know, he was kind of thrown into it and how that's ideally not really, you know, uh, the situation you should be put in. But he was just saying, you know, get into the, the, uh, the work of Tolkien himself, immerse yourself in that. He said that he kind of lucked out because – when they started, they were doing a lot of physical stuff. It was yeah. a lot of the sword fighting. It was the the fight scenes, things like that, that he could kind of run with. Yeah. Yep. And read up while that was happening, because um, when he went in, they were they had already been filming. He was replacing a, another actor. Yeah, Nicholas um, Cage. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, jeez. So, um, so he was kind of thrown into it that way. But he said, you know, his because he is um, Danish. He said a lot of his uh, knowledge and exposure as a kid to um, some of those Scandinavian folk tales that yeah. that had a big, he was like, you know, the, it, they weren't unlike, uh, you know, the stories in Lord of the Rings. And he said that, you know, obviously those, he came to learn that those influences were big in Tolkien's life. You know, we talk about yeah. today um, in this chapter, the huge influence and really him, this chapter, he's pretty much paying homage to Beowulf. Yeah. Yeah. Which was one of his favorite pieces of Tales, literature yeah. yeah and so i mean even we're talking about metacell the golden hall is the same name in both um so anyway he had some um you know knowledge of that going into it and that really helped him but anyway go check that article out it's really really cool anytime yeah. vigo talks it's great right um we were going i mean he they offered that to us first but we just you know oh, it's time like vigo we're kind of busy so know, running a book club here so you know, unless you're going to read along with us. Yeah, but they yeah. did a good job. They so. did okay. <laughs> uh, Tolkien biopic, not a whole lot of news out there. Like I said, next six months, look forward, it's coming. Yep. In other corners of Middle Earth, uh, a little update on the Billy Boyd World Tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is finally on its way to uh, to Charlotte. Yeah, things seem and, to just work out. Yeah, it may be headed um, even further south. Yeah. Okay, so... Somewhere special. Yeah, so just keep your... Um, eye to the social medias and your ear to, well, your uh, your, your headphones, and um, you'll find out where Billy will be going next. We're really excited about that. Um, yeah. Pretty cool uh, uh, poll that we had. I think it was a record, Ezra. 180 of you voted. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow, this was awesome. This was really cool. I, like I said, the more input we have, the better. A lot of comments, too, that I'll read, but our, our question was, how do you prefer your Gandalf? White and shiny or gray hat and hood? Uh, 39% of you said white and shiny, 61% give them to me gray, which, so Ezra, do you have a preference or is it kind of hard to, well, determine? I think my vote was, was gray. I'm pretty sure Mm -hmm. I was gray. I was gray. Um, you're a gray force user. I am. I, I mean, it's, it's cool. I love, I love, I, you know, I love when he shows up and he's just, you know, all powerful and he's the one versus the nine and all this, you know, cool stuff going on. But man, there's just something. Um, even when this is all said and done, I, I don't even really. It, what's what's cool is by the end of this, we don't really see him as 
two. He, he has two. Yeah. He's back to one. And if but, you think about it, too, yeah. you, you look back when he was gray, there were moments he sh- he showed flashes of the white. Yes. And yeah. there are moments now where you're like, oh, he's still he's good still, old Gandalf right, exactly. the gray. So it is kind of like this weird metamorph. He's like a butterfly, but he was, he yeah. was a caterpillar, but he's the same creature. Right. I yeah. Know. So I, I think it's like as it, as he goes, he's sort of lo- like things are coming back to him, growing and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having trouble with words. <laughs> like Lane is just no. I just, I just, I just thought that I used the analogy of a butterfly <laughs> to Gandalf, and then I thought about how some little kids call butterflies butt flies, and so I just just came to my mind and made me. What is wrong with you? Kind of okay. giggle at nine thirty at good. night. That's it's good. only nine thirty at night. Only nine thirty. Wow. I was. Uh, you know, you make people tired when you say that. Butt fly. Uh, Look at the butt were... fly outside, Uncle Wes. <laughs> But you were saying, yeah. Oh, geez. I thought it was going to go a different direction, so yeah. we're good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, we're fine. You were saying, though? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> something about growing. That's all I remember. Um, <laughs> so. We had some awesome comments um, that went along with this poll. Uh, Daniel Brush said, neither. Yeah. Period. What does that mean, man? I don't know. Does that mean that he doesn't want to choose between the two? Maybe he's not a Gandalf fan. I, I liked it. It was simple. It was kind of elusive yeah i don't know what he means by yeah. that pretty cool right um we've got erica barnes uh she says i'd rather be shiny okay okay so shiny and white there we go uh Susie millhouse says this is a hard one i like the friendship you feel from gandalf the gray and the power you feel from gandalf the white not to say he's not friendly as gandalf the white and not powerful and gray uh but i feel like the focus shifts as his color changes i promise that makes sense in my head Daylight savings time might be throwing me off a bit. But there are also some more comments on that. And I, I totally agree. I know what she's saying. I mean, it's kind of like what we just said, yeah. too. There's flashes of each within each. Yep. Uh, Jim said, I absolutely voted based on the pictures. So I obviously went with the actual Gandalf. Too late to change now. The gray and hooded was the only one I could find where there was a hat and a hood, and it was Eminem. Yeah. So um, that's what he's alluding to there. Kayla Clifford said, totally love Gandalf from the hood. Feels like Granddaddy Gandalf rather than all powerful, but little a little bit arrogant Uncle Gandalf somehow. Still in my top three favorite characters, though. Yeah, excellent. All right, cool. Thanks, awesome. guys, for your input there and and your participation. We love those polls; they're a lot of fun for us. Um, old news. Um, just some tidbits that we should throw out that I've been trying to put in here forever and always forgetting. Dom Monahan cast in the new Star Wars film, yeah. Episode Nine. Excited. Give a, a quick, a, a quick, a hot real, take about uh, that. Real quick, he's he's going to play a dark side user, um, and uh, yeah, wow, dark side user. He, we, he's we, going to get to put that. his mascara on for that. I will tell you what, he, he loves his one mascara. of two things. He's either a dark side user or he is an old uh, force user from one, one of Luke's. You know, I think he's Luke's son. Disciples. All right, I think he's Luke's son. <clears> take <throat> it to the bank. Pine for nine. Um, Ian McKellen. <laughs> there's a documentary coming out. Someone shared this on the group. I can't remember who it was. I'm sorry. It's Butterbur's mind at full effect. But there's a Ian McKellen documentary coming out. I watched the trailer. I cried. Yeah. It looks amazing. Very inspirational. Um, more. We'll, we'll. I guess we'll kind of update that as more is revealed there. Uh, and then there's also Vigo's in a new film that's coming out. He's driving hard for those Oscars, man. Uh, co-starring with Mahershala Ali, and it's. Green Book or something, Green Book thing. I don't know what the title is. I probably should have looked that up real quick before, but he's out there. He's out there. Every second. All right, guys, we're headed next into our first uh, first ever and uh, a continuing uh, feature we're going to have, a premium Patreon profile with Goldberry. Yes. So we've got Lady Goldberry here with us. And this is a cool chance for us to get get to know some of our patrons a little bit better. Ezra, what level are these patrons? Uh, th- these are our um, Valar. Okay, our Valar. I think it might and even... And our Mayar as I well? I think it's Mayar as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what, what happened is Goldberry came up with 10 uh, Lord of the Rings specific questions that we sent out to all of these patrons. And they gave us their answers. So we're going to go through a piece at a time, three questions at a time, with uh, so we get to know some of these patrons. So our first one is Phil Seidel. Um, and Goldberry, you asked him a few questions, isn't that right? I see you wandering up from the, the with you Wendell and, uh, questions in your hands. Got him. Like, Lily's. I'm a little nervous. I have to tell you my first time being on here this and Phil, great. I want to do your answer some awesome <laughs> justice. So our first question was, who is your Tolkien spirit animal 
and or favorite character, and I believe he mm. answered both. My favorite character would have to be Faramir. We are connected in many ways, and he's just a badass ranger. Nice. Yeah. Badass. Yeah. Awesome. Uh-huh. I could see him being a Faramir. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's he's also our historian guy, so it feels like, yes. you know, he's near mm-hmm. all of that culture and yeah. that history over there. The libraries. Gondor. Yeah, I feel like he's that's where there. he's getting all this intel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think so. Our next question. Good question, Goldberg. That was a great question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very proud of it. <laughs> Amanda is in the Shire of America. What is a good mid- middle mid- middle <laughs> earth comparison for your home? Phil says, I live in Reno, Nevada, which I compare to Rune, where the Easterlings dwell. High desert, but not extreme temperatures like Herod in Southern California. Mm. Here it is rarely, it rarely hits three digits, and there's basically no humidity that at all. Sounds pretty nice. Sounds wonderful. No uh, humidity. You know, the thing, the, the, uh, where? I mean, over in Far East. Yeah. Is this, are we talking like desert land? It says high desert, but not extreme temperatures. Yeah. I don't know. Is that. He might you, see some Easterlings and some well, Rodrum kind of wandering yeah, in his backyard. Right. So that's where he, li- I mean, I don't know. It's like, Phil, you need to come visit the Shire. All right. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. It's like, like, what's going on over there, man? I, <laughs> it's just, it is interesting to hear about people who live in different parts of the, of the world, you know? Tell you what, I like the whole uh, no humidity thing. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. That's my favorite time of the year is when there's the least humidity. Fun fact, Phil. The first time Lane ever said hello to me, we were in a plane in, in the Nevada. state of Nevada. Holy smokes. In a little village called Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> a little casino. Guys, the things I learned, it's, this is, a, this yep. is amazing. Yep. Uh, so there you go. We I, love Nevada I almost didn't, reason. and I'm glad I did. Nevada, wow. Nevada. What could you, you Could you imagine? Nevada, that, banana, banana. That one decision. Oh. That I one know. decision. Yeah, he said he had to... Butterfly effect. Had to get it out. Build the courage up. Yeah. All right. In our last question for this episode, we have Phil's favorite character, favorite region, favorite book, favorite chapter, and or favorite film. That's got like bonus questions. Lots of questions. Yeah. Like so he has said, like I said before, Faramir is my favorite character. Gondor would be my favorite realm, but I would, would, I would want to live in either Rivendell, since mm-hmm. I have a weakness for the mountains, or the Shire. I'm with you there, Phil. And then he said, I would... Say, Return of the King is my favorite. I couldn't pick a favorite chapter, though. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Awesome. So, Return of the King. Well, I'm, I'm starting to real. you know, I've been reading ahead. I don't know if I told you this, Lane. And I'm, I know. That's you what know, you do. I'm ready to go, man. I mean, ready to get there. But Two Towers is so good right now that we're just, you know, uh, totally amped. So, you know, um, in, in, anywho. So, that's cool. You can't pick up. Yeah, I mean, come on, Phil. You can't narrow it down to a chapter. <laughs> I like that. I like that Phil would love to be in either Rivendell or the Shire, which is nothing like Reno. Yeah, isn't that great? Yes. So he does. Actually. He needs to get out here. Phil, have you ever been to Ohio? I guess we should ask that question. Yeah, I don't know. Going Maybe back that's... to the favorite chapter. Yeah. This evening, you did just say the one that you read might have beat out the one that you read before. I know. I think it, maybe it's ever changing. Maybe it maybe is. Maybe it is, and that's why yeah. you can't answer it. I mean, I did. I did say last reread that Two Towers might be my new favorite book. Right. Right. And I can't Favorites believe change. I'm saying that. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Well. All right. We did knock him down a peg. Gold Thank bearing. you, Phil. Thank you. I appreciate your awesome answers to those yeah. first three questions. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Thanks, Goldberry. We Is really it appreciate day, it. Washington, Goldberry. You got to go do some laundry. I might need to go take a little rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's typically how it goes, you know. Yeah, Just hopefully right. we won't we won't keep you up up Where there. The psycho's talking to the mics and she's getting her beauty rest. <laughs> that's right. Until when he wakes up. Yeah, that's right. All right. All well, right. thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, uh-huh. Phil. Thanks for being here, Goldberry. All right, guys. Uh, now all this fun aside, time to have even more fun. Let's dig into the reread. I mean, honestly, this is one of uh, my new favorite chapters. So I know, like last week, we spent a significant amount of time in the White Rider. <clears throat> I'm really happy and content with the conversation that we had. It's great. But the King of the Golden Hall is now probably one of my favorite chapters in the whole thing wow. so far. Wow. I mean, it's so far to this point. It's it's been. I can't believe I'm saying that, but like I <laughs> had your, so your, many moments that were just like, oh wow, chills. And your man's at work here too. Yes. And you know what though, you. you both of our men. You act like, yeah, yeah. Our oh, man. Right. Uh, you act like hobbits are your favorite. I think the people of Rohan are actually your favorite, dude. Anytime 
we're sitting around yeah. and we just belt out Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's I know. Yeah, I know. You're That's right. what you go to. And you go to the field, uh, you know, the, the scene on the field of, of I do. Pelinor Fields. I, I, I can't talk. And Theoden, you know, mustering the Rohirrim yeah. and, and out there and saying, Death, death, death. That's what you go to, man. I know. That's what you go it's to. It's crazy because, like, I, I've often told my good buddy Tom, too, um, just that, like, I'm like, man, every time it comes up on screen, I'm like, I would ride. For that, I, I, I we've would, had conversations about in the, in the reality of riding to your death. That's exactly what they're knowing doing. you're gonna die. You and know being that you like, are. I'm all in. Because here's my thing, man. Uh, we'll get to that part later. Mm-hmm. But like when they come up upon that horde, I mean, and that city is under siege. Yeah, I will do what I can. Yeah, give me a sword, give me a spear. <laughs> Very nuts. Let me saddle up. Yeah, and uh, death. Yeah, death, death baby, death. <laughs> Oh, let's get I fired love it, up. Man. Let's I love get it. fired up. Um, All right. We were also saying, too, a lot of stuff happens in this chapter, but it feels quick because. Right. It, 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 this Essentially, what happens in this chapter takes like the entire second film to occur. They Correct. really drag it out. They really make it more complicated than it has to be than Tolkien made it. And so when you go back, you get so stuck in those movieisms that when you go back and read the book, you're like, that's not even at all how it happened. Um, right. We were even talking about just the transformation of Theoden coming back to oh, it's himself. So good. It's more subtle. It's more it's more driven. His own. Yeah, it, he own, it's really all him. Really, yeah. I mean, you know, Gandalf but it, has but it him. also. I think goes to that the, the spoken that those guiding words. You know, mm-hmm. simply just um, go breathe some fresh air. Yeah, let's I mean, hold your sword. It's it's more it's I, 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 it's a slow exorcism. I, well, I've always yeah it is. <laughs> I've always you know? loved the way. That Tolkien does this because it's not necessarily like big and grandiose. Things don't have to be huge, mm-hmm. you know? And that's why we are looking at every single word because, and sometimes you read it too fast yes. because you almost want to slow this moment down. And as he is, as the strength is coming back to his fingers, as he wraps them around, you know, the sword, um, you know, in his hand, uh, that, that hilt it, with a gleaming, you know, a uh, green jewel, yeah. you know, it's just like, ah, you can see it. Yeah. Right. You can yeah. feel it. And, and I, I, I take what I saw in the film and I, I see the way that that life came back to him and mm-hmm. I can see that happening in parts. Mm-hmm. So they sped it up. Anyways. They they made it a little more dramatic and I get that too. But I just think like the, the way it's done here, it doesn't need changed. It's perfect. Yeah, it's great. It's perfect. It's fantastic. I think it's actually more powerful, honestly, because like it you is. said, the king of Rohan himself. It really is. Yeah. Kind of has to take those steps. Oh, he's not man. saved. He's, he, you know, he's the one that climbs out. Yeah. Essentially. Yep. From yep. a grip. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's, let's start with a little recap. So last week we were talking about, uh, we had, we were into the, um, the white rider mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, Gandalf has returned to us. Caught up with our old friend. Yeah. We yeah. have this, uh, we have him. They may have nine, but we have one. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all kind of. Uh, he is. He's their captain. Yeah, as, yeah. as Aragorn has said, and and they're going to follow him. Yep. You know, and so uh, he he catches them all up on on the epic battle that he had with the Belrog. Yeah. And, and uh, we we learn. I mean, he's he's coming back. His mind, his memories, and things are coming back. He's been um, he's been fighting with you know. Um, the Dark Lord in high places. Yeah. You know, he's been fighting against the shadow. He's had a hand almost uh, in everything that's happened yeah. since he's been gone with right. them. Yeah, he's been there with them in a sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He and Guahir are out just kind of, you know, taking care of things, man. Really. Pretty amazing. Really doing a lot. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and then it kind of ends with us seeing Shadow Facts, right? Shadow Facts comes and. And right, the mystery is solved. Gimli, you know, was, was yeah. concerned about the horses. The horses, that's right. Uh, the night before, and, and they had actually. Uh, Met Shadow had ran off to to be with Shadow Facts. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So, all right. This this uh, week our, our summary here: Gandalf has returned uh, from the dead. He is now um, he's he's in charge, right? And mm-hmm. he's he's said uh, that um, it's time to head to Theoden's Hall. Yep. Return and, our horses. Uh, well, and, and we had told Aemir that we would. Yep. Right. So to keep that yep. promise. Yep. Um, so they head there. Uh, they encounter um, Grima. Yep. Warm tongue. Yep. And. It's a showdown. Yeah, man. It's awesome. It's a great time. And then King Theoden gets a, a good... Uh, he get, he gets to, you know, go out and breathe that uh, clean, fresh yeah. air. Uh, you know, sniff some good air. He's revived. Yeah. I love the line where it talks about his... The, the, the lines of age and worry. 
that uh, once he smiles, they disappear and they don't come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> How cool, man. Yep. How cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's dive into this here and get, get into some of these uh, juicy details. Do it. Um, I, I, I feel like we're, go- we're going to be a little burdened down in this, so I apologize. But like, it's just, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. So um, we have this, um, as, as they're writing across, there's a nice little bit here. The, the pictures, as is Alan Lee again, right? You said, um, yes, illustrated yep. version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great pictures here as, as they're writing up to um, <clears throat> see uh, the king here. So uh, mm, it says, yeah. a, a bitter chill came into the air. Slowly in the east, the dark faded to cold gray. Red shafts of light leapt uh, from the black walls of the Emin Wheel uh, far away upon their left. Dawn came clear and bright. A wind swept across their path, rushing through the bent grass. Mm. Suddenly, Shadowfax stood still and neighed. Gandalf pointed ahead. Um, <clears throat> so they're making their way. You know, uh, they're going. Uh, it's it's a beautiful bit yeah, of the imagery. Uh, is gorgeous. And you've been here. You've seen yeah. where where this is all. You know. Yeah, this is an incredible. And, and like you said, I ha- I've been lucky enough to be go twice actually to this location where the you know where they filmed um, Edoras. And uh, man, I tell you what, man, if you guys have one place that you can go in New Zealand. I would say that over any other place. Really? Yeah. More than going to the Shire, more than any other location you might want to see. It is, it never leaves you. Yeah. Never leaves you. And the way, the way it's described here, it's a little bit different from what you, you know, from what you see, but man, I tell you what, it evokes the same emotions and feeling. I feel like I'm there. Yeah. Transported in this chapter. Well, for sure. Well, like one of the awesome things that, uh, that we get to see here is, is legless looking off, yeah. um, you know, far and his elf eyes again. Yeah, see, yeah. Seeing Edoras and talking about, um, what he sees and you see these themes or you see these colors, uh, you know, green and gold, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right. You see those yep. often repeated. There's, there's these yep. gold posts, uh, green terrace, right. And, um, this, this great aloft is a, is a great hall of men, yeah. um, you know, it's it seemed to his eyes that it was thatched with gold, yeah. right? So the light of it shines far over the land. Uh, golden too are the posts of its doors. There, men in bright mail stand, um, but uh, all else within the courts are yet asleep. And mm-hmm. so they've come. They, they've come just uh, you know early in the morning, yep. and uh, before everyone is sort of aroused. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and Gandalf sort of informs them, you know, that this is Edoras, right? Yeah. He kind you of can kind of imagine like a, a cold early spring morning too, right? The way that that would look in a mm-hmm. vista like this, this wide like uh, landscape you're taking in and just how the light would play. And yeah, man, he just, he paints a picture with words. Absolutely. So well. Yep. Uh, now Gandalf gives him good counsel as they head in here. I, we've had this, um, there's something, there's something eerie yeah. in the land, right? Yeah. There's some ill will that has uh, been working against them. And he cautions them to not draw any weapons, yep. you know, to speak no haughty words, and uh, until we've come right before the the, the, the seat there mm-hmm. of Theoden. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. yep. So, all right. Um, better than I thought. I thought we were going to be bogged down in all of the yeah. minutia there. Well, I, I do think it's interesting, too. Like, it, uh, okay, so in the films, there's a little side thing here. We get the idea that it's um, um, really dreary, uh, uh great like depression and grayness kind of lays over Edoras, which it does it does but i think it's interesting the way he paints continues to paint this picture you know the morning was bright and clear about them birds were singing when the travelers came to the stream just the way he described it and there's there's a lot of green there's a lot the willow trees that are are um a blossoming and the feeling and, and feeling the approach of spring it's just when i when i watch the film and the imagery you get from that you don't necessarily it doesn't match what's going on here right yeah it yep. almost feels like the the landscape here is foreshadowing what Gandalf said last chapter, that turning of the tide. Right. Okay. You know, this yeah. land may have been in winter, you know, uh, uh, yeah. metaphorically for for a while. Right. But, but it's spring is coming. Yep. New life, New life. is here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so that kind of sets the tone for this entire chapter, really, especially when you think about Theoden, um, you know, new life has come uh, to the land of Rohan. Yeah, it says that feeling the feeling the approach of spring, right? Yeah, yeah the blushing red. Yeah, um, right, exactly. So um, Gandalf tells him to kind of look. He says, "How fair are the bright eyes in the grass?" Yeah, um, this is where we're, they're coming upon um, the the sort of like this this grave. Site? Yeah, the barrows. Yeah, the yeah. symbol Muna are the are the um, the flower that that grow um, on these barrows, and they're significant to the 
the people of Rohan, um, they blossom in all seasons of the year and they grow only where dead bodies are. Yeah. So they're very uh, uh, symbolic. You see it in the film um, that they're, they cover the graves, the beautiful flowers. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they see seven mounds. There, yes, right? To, that's to right. The we get this kind of the his, this short history lesson of, you know, how um, all the, the sires of Theoden, where they all sleep. Um, right. And, you know, it's where Legolas kind of says, you know, it's like a drop in the drop in the bucket for how long Legolas, I've been around. Come on, you know. But but I love that Aragorn comes back with the idea, you know, but to them, this is this is an ancient house. Yeah, for them, that's right. You know, and th- mm-hmm. th- these people um, have really cherished this line. And, and, yeah. and uh, he, he says that the raising of this house is but a memory of song and the years before are lost in the mist of time. Wow. So, yeah. yeah so this, for, yeah, you're right. It's all con- it's contextual, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So. Yes. And also kind of showcasing, again, Aragorn's history with Rohan, you know, his knowledge of the people um, and him kind of sticking up for them a little bit, mm-hmm. which is, is important to see as well. Yeah. So now as they, uh, they, let's see here, yet they listened for there was a strong music in it. Um, so yeah. the language of, of the Rohirrim, I want to hear that. Right. I, yeah, I, I did too because it was kind of neat how they were often going in and out of the common speech, and they were kind of talking. Did Tolkien ever you know, write that? I don't know. I don't, yeah, you can look it. Look, you can look it up. Real I'm quick. gonna look it up real quick. Yeah, because it almost seems like I've never seen anything like that. Right, right. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see here. So now, now, uh, now they call this land their home, their own, uh, and their speech is sundered from the northern kin. Uh, then he began to chant softly in a slow tongue unknown to the elf and dwarf. Yet they listened, for there was a strong music in it. Uh, that, I guess, is the language of the Rohirrim, said Legolas. For it is like unto this land, rich and rolling in part, and else hard and stern as mountains. But I cannot guess what it means, save that it is laden with the sadness of mortal men. So I would love to have heard this. I know. You know, I mean, I, know. I think it would be interesting to sort of hear... Um, and I know that he's modeled, you know, he's modeled these people sort yes. of after that Anglo-Saxon yep. type of... Uh, so what I kind of got real quick, because I just, I've never seen like him, uh, I don't know, write this yeah. at length or if there's a different alphabet, but uh, Rohirric was the language of the Rohirrim. Um, and so Tolkien saw the relationship between Rohirric and the common speech or the common tongue to be the same uh, as that of Anglo-Saxon and English. Okay. Okay, so close, but... You know, yeah. obviously different. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, he's, uh, um, Aragorn kind of moves on, and he's he's. Uh, he, I think he re- he recites it right in the common yeah. in the common tongue for yeah. them. Um, so, you want to read some of that there? Just yeah. Like? Where now the horse and the rider? Where is the horn that was blowing? Where is the helm and the hauberk, and the bright hair flowing? Where is the hand on the harp string and the red fire glowing? Where is the spring and the harvest and the tall corn growing? They have passed like rain on the mountain, like a wind in the meadow. The days have gone down in the west behind the hills into shadow. Who shall gather the smoke of the dead wood burning or behold the flowing years from the sea returning? Yeah. Right. So, and again, that's that's this, this poem um, in Rohan that's recalling the tall and fair uh, Errol the Young. Yeah. Right. So one of the basically the founder of this yeah. mm-hmm. you know kingdom, yeah. um, and uh, we get some more history um, about him. He you know who rode down out of the north, uh, and there were wings upon his feet on wings upon the feet of his steed. Um, his steed uh, is Fellaroff. Fellaroff, right, father of horses, which is cool. We kind of did some some digging um, just because this kept kind of coming up, and and I was intrigued by it. This connection. They've often talked about Shadowfax and how rare and how yeah. you know the the this line of this like special what makes line him of a lord. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. right? And so, um, just a tidbit of his, history here: Errol's father um, uh, was a tamer of horses, actually. And Isn't that cool. That's so cool. Yeah. It, so, Jeez. so this whole history, right? So, you know, he's he's taming these horses, right? And uh, what what are the the the, the Maras? The Maras. The Maras. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, he comes across a a horse um, that he tries to tame and uh, is unable to. Yeah. It's a, it's a white horse. It's it's one of the, it's just Damn. a beautiful you know horse, and uh, it actually he dies. And uh, Errol takes up you know goes after the horse 
and kind of calls amazing. him down, right? And yeah, calls him down and and uh, tames him and uh, gives him a name, right? Um, oh, man, which is which is just super cool. And so that horse ends up being sort of like the the original Lord of Horses. Kind of understands um, that's where the line, I guess, that you know, Shadow yeah, Vax sort of yeah. comes from. It can understand the speech of men, man. you know, really. Really cool stuff, I think. It, it really is. Yeah. So, yeah, and ends up riding into to battle. Uh, they aid Gondor. You know, um, he becomes this awesome figure, yeah. you know, and uh, eventually establishes this kingdom, you know. Um, yeah. So Tell he's you actually again, buried just, right there. I mean, he's yeah. buried there with his horse. Wow. Yeah, which is cool. There's those cool little nuggets he leaves for us to go, you know, if we want to go dig into him, we can. Yep, exactly. You know? Man, amazing. So... All right. Um, let's see. So they're they're Come they're set the gates, uh, right? Yeah, yep. right. There, there they are. And um, let's see. Oh, stay, strangers here unknown. Uh, they cried in the tongue of the Riddermark. So they're speaking in uh, a language that really yeah. this company can't understand. And so as they approach the gate, they they've got their their spears. They they bar the way, and uh, that's not a very nice thing. To do really, yeah. they, you, how do you know that we can understand that, or you know that we can't, and you're going to use it anyways? Right. This language, why not use the common tongue? It's sort of an insult in and of itself, and almost right? and almost kind of a test too. Yeah, if you're friends, you'll know and our language, and that was one of the one of the um, uh, criteria for being able to enter. That's right, right? You know, yep. you had to be able to speak for Herrick. Yeah, um, but they yep. don't. You know, I, the, the the dialogue here too is so cool between here at the gate, and then when they get up to the um, when they get up to Hama at the um, the, at the the door door warden or whatever they call him, the the conversation the dialogue is so cool because they are they're real prickly at first yeah and then because of Gandalf and Aragorn and Legolas Gimli their interactions they start to go okay these guys are probably gonna help well us and out actually here. yeah it, well we'll get to it but yeah. almost in, in in awe eventually yes so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but Gandalf understands her speech and he says you mm-hmm. know few strangers do. Uh, mm-hmm. Why do you not speak to us in the common tongue? It's the custom in the West if you wish to be answered. Yeah. And uh, so they say it is the will of, of King of, of Theoden the King that none should enter his gate save those who know our tongue and our fr- and our friends. Mm-hmm. And um, I wonder as I read some of this, how much of this is worm tongue? How much of this is Theoden? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's a good question. These these orders that are left at the gate, type of thing. That's a really good question. You know, would he? It just seems it's not as welcoming. You know. Yeah. And at what point did all of that turn? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great that's question. I thought. So, uh, you know, let's see. Let's move on here a little bit. Um, they get to this point where basically they they, they see um, they've been watching them mm-hmm. from afar. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah. Long have we kept guard here and have, we have watched you from afar. Never have we seen other riders so strange, nor any horses more proud than is one of these that bear you. Yeah. He is one of the Maras, unless our eyes are cheated by some spell. Say, are you not a wizard, some spy from Saruman, or phantoms of his craft? Speak now and be swift. Yeah. Yeah, they're not having any of that. And, right. and, and uh, Aragorn is kind of shocked. You know, have you not... You should know these horses, and you should right, know... Right. Uh, has Aramir not, you know, uh, told you guys about who we are? Bringing him up kind of brings this... Um, we find out he's been arrested. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I, I love his line, too. He says, you know, seldom does a thief ride home to the stable. Yeah. Like, why would we be bringing these guys exactly. back to you if we were if we were crooked, if we were bad dudes? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're right. Learning about AMR being, uh, yeah, in shackles. Man. Right. And they say, of AMR, I have not to say. Yeah. You know, this troubled look kind of came over them. So, um, if what you tell me is true, then doubtless they then will have heard of it. Uh, maybe your coming was not wholly unlooked for. So, but it was two nights ago yeah. that Wormtongue yeah. came to us and said, "By the will of Theoden, no stranger should pass these gates." And so that's a good point. You're right. Like, was that really Theoden, or was that just Grimma? Yeah, working his will. Yep. Maybe a little bit of both too. Yeah, I, I like. I, we're going to talk about mm-hmm. Wormtongue here in a second mm-hmm. because I actually think there's uh, a lot to be used said about. To, him. Just used to be a man, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now he's a snake. He is. Yeah. All right. Sad. But Gandalf is he's, he's he's a little hasty. I don't know if Tree, Treebeard would like this, but he's a little hasty. He, yeah, he's on an errand, right? And uh, so he yeah, wasn't wasting our time. Yeah, he doesn't let's want to go. talk to Worm Tongue. He wants to go speak to the Lord of the Mark. Uh, so 
Uh, he moves them along, and and they basically he says, well, at least go ask, you know, if we can be yeah. seen, you know, s- send someone, right? And so uh, they do, uh, and they, they they go check, and sure enough, they're actually allowed, you know, to um, to approach mm-hmm. to, to to go see Theoden. Mm-hmm. So um, he, he says, strange names indeed. They kind of go over everyone that's there and and talk about Aragorn, you know, um, and just how he's the he's the heir of kings. Yeah, you know. Legolas, the elf, Gimli, the dwarf, and so on. So they kind of go over each of them, and they're definitely starting to get a little more. Um, I, I, I I can't tell if they're more. Oh, like when you hear he's the heir of kings, and you hear he's Aragorn, right? And you've maybe heard that name or heard rumor of it. Like, what does that do to you? You know? Yeah. Are you relieved? Are you anxious? Are you thinking I know these guys good. are just putting? Putting <laughs> up names or what? You know? Well, it's kind of funny because he's going against his own advice from earlier. You know, don't speak any haughty words. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, you're throwing down these pretty big names. Right. It's just Gandalf's so funny. It's like he, you know, he, he, he sets the tone, but he's like, hey, if I got to improvise, I'm going to improvise. Right. If I got to throw down some names. I also love, too, this is just weird, but I love that they have a different name for Minas Tirith. Mundberg. That that's, their, that's their name for Minas Tirith. Say Isn't what? Isn't that cool? I didn't notice that. Yeah, Mundberg is what they call Minas Tirith. Huh. So it's, it's mentioned here a couple times, but, like, if you don't know that, you... You go look it up. I mean, what yeah. is Munberg? Where is that? Is that another part of Rohan? It's Minas Tirith. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah, pretty cool little nugget there. All right. Um, so now they 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 they've they've gone. Um, word comes back. They just have to leave their weapons. Yeah. Okay. And that's what that's what they're told. So they're going through the first gate, uh, in and they're in, uh, to Tatteras, and uh, the dark gate swung open. The travelers entered, walking in file mm-hmm. behind their guide. And uh, just kind of goes over just the make of of the houses here. Yeah, you know, um, built with wood, dark doors as they passed. Yeah. The stone path that leads them up the broad broad path. Right. I think this is where they got. You know, again, this is one of those. I'm sure right here is a spot where they looked when they're making oh. the film to kind of. And they nailed it, didn't they? Yeah, this they nailed yeah. it. Yeah, I thought they did a pretty good job. Um, I, lo- I love this idea too of this this uh, the stream that that kind of. Yeah, is, it's almost like I imagine a spring under this hill. That comes out at the top and flows down. Falling through stream. The, yep. Yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Right. Uh, yeah. So um, as as they kind of go up these these stone hewn um, steps, right? They, there's uh, more guards at the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, tall above, fellows, man. Yeah, tall. These guys are tall, man. They've mm-hmm. got golden hair. Um, it's. <laughs> I mean, the the gene uh, the the seed is strong. I'll say oh, that yeah. here in this in this uh, kingdom yeah, for sure. I mean, they're all they all kind of look alike, don't they? A yep. little bit. Yep. <laughs> you know. Um, and we talked about that 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 the height is is a connection back to ancient. Yeah. Uh, you know, Numenorean blood. Uh, this little strand of blood that's in them. Yeah. Um, that makes them taller than than most most mortal men. Um, but yeah, man, it, it just the, you're getting the image over and over again these are dudes you don't want to mess with yeah like these are just these are warriors man yeah from their exactly. height to you know the the way they they bear themselves to you know the way they're dressed all the, they're dressed for battle you know these yeah. guards are ready to go they their are. swords are laid on their knees unsheathed there's also a, like a silence to all of this that's kind of like uh yeah kind of creepy in it right uh it's not until gandalf sort of makes conversation here that they interact i mean how long we, there's this eerie kind of uh there's also awkward no, silence yeah and there's also i guess everyone could still be asleep but there's also no mention of any just normal people around seems like the doors are shut right yeah no kids out yeah no and mamas and papas early early morning but, yeah um but you think someone would be out milking a cow or something you know yeah getting some oats for their horse i don't know right no mention of that yeah kind of so, cold uh anyways they they um they kind of go over you know who they are um, you know, we we meet uh, the door ward of Theoden. Yep. Right. Hama. Hama. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's he's tasked with taking their weapons. Yeah. And I think this is one of the coolest, intense, uh, you know, scenes with Aragorn um, and Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like giving it up. It's just we were, so and, unreal. And we were talking too about the differences between um, the way characters are portrayed in the film. And then the way they are here in the book. Yeah. And we were talking about, uh, who are we talking about? Aragorn, Theoden, right? And then we went on to Aragorn. Right. And we were talking about how this would be really hard to imagine and Vigo. And Aomer, too. We were talking about. Yes, Aomer, too. Yeah. But how this would be really hard to imagine, like, Vigo. Vigo's Aragorn kind of, like, 
being so resistant. Maybe not. Maybe it's just my own personal. But he in the in the films he's such a you know okay whatever I'll 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 uh, I'll show my show my hand when I need to. But yeah. like if it's something simple, not a big deal. And I, you know I don't know. I just, it's hard to imagine Viggo Mortensen being like you know if anyone touches my sword, I'm cutting their heads off. Right? Yeah, I, There's just a different kind of um, like the way he carries himself is a little different in the movie than than here. This oh, is a bold it stuns, dude. It stuns them and it's yeah. dominant to, to to the point where they even refer to him, you know, later as Lord. You yeah, know, and they yeah. reassure him. They uh, address him correctly. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like their tone, the wor- the verbiage changes uh, a little bit. So uh, first, first Legolas though passes on his bow mm-hmm. and and mentions um, the lady, the lady, mm-hmm. right? You know. Uh, Galadriel and where this bow had come from and to take good care and you know uh, he sets it down and we see the wonder now, that comes into that man's eyes what's interesting is he actually hands it and the man touches it and mm-hmm. takes it and puts it down mm-hmm. right quickly rather mm-hmm. quickly mm-hmm. right uh, Aragorn stood a while hesitating it is not my will he said to put aside my sword yeah. or to deliver Andril to the hand of any other man and when I was first like again during this reread I'm, I'm listening to, th- to, to this again and I'm sort of like wait what well, hold on, I'm, I'm so. I'm, at first, I'm kind of like, "What? What's wrong, bro? Like, just yeah. it's it's cool, man. Just just give me your sword." What? Yeah. I, I, I and then I then I get it. Then I'm sort of like, "No, no, 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 no. It's not. This just is that. more than a sword. Yeah. No one can touch this. Yeah. This sword. Yeah. You know, it. It's not. You're not. No, no one else is. And it makes you really. I mean, he is. And that's something he's had coming, to, man. I mean, yeah. It's, and and that's something he's had to work to earn as well. Yes. I mean, he's had to prove himself and, and make certain decisions to be able to, you know, take up that mantle. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah. So, so it's not something he would put down lightly or, you know, have someone just say, well, you got to put that down. So, no, don't boss me. I, I can take my sword wherever. And he even says that. He's like, you know, um, he says, it's not clear to me that the will of Theoden, son of Thangle, even though he be Lord of the Mark, should prevail over the will of Aragorn, son of Arathorn, Elendil's heir of Gondor. And then Hama says, this is the house of Theoden, not of Aragorn. Even were he king of Gondor in the seat of Denethor, said Hama, stepping swiftly before the doors and barring the way. His sword was now in his hand and the point towards the strangers. So pretty wow. pretty intense there. And then Wait, is that Gan- Hama's sword? Yeah. Lord. And it's, it's Gandalf. Uh. Yeah, and it's Gandalf who says, all right, guys, like, you yeah, know, we can fight, but the only reward would be the laughter of Mordor. Yeah, let's uh, but let's think take about a step this. back here. Think about this and how loyal this group of people is to that line. You know, um, yeah. I, I just I, yeah, it's amazing. Theoden is their king, and that's that's their king, right? Yeah. Now, even though Aragorn is king of kings, right? All right, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, it really is. cool. Uh, and they may even understand that. Yeah, uh, but they are here too. This is this is their king's house, and this is them kind of seeing. This is the the strangers, the travelers, the hunters. They're seeing this loyalty. Yeah, they're like, wow, you get in good with these people. These right. people are, are are loyal to death. Mm-hmm. You know, they they serve one another. It's and I really like. Isn't that what you're looking for in Middle Earth at this point? You're mm-hmm. looking for loyalty. You're looking for, um, yeah, that devout. Uh, I don't know, man. Selfless yep. sacrifice for you know people in charge, people who lead you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Aragorn, though, he goes on to say that basically, if this were any other sword, yeah, yeah, no I'd problem. turn, I'd turn any, I would turn all, every other weapon over right. to you. Yeah. But uh, I don't know about this, you know. And I guess I did kind of jump the gun there because we still have Gimli saying, you know, you know, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be alone. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight. Oh with yeah, him exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then that's where, yeah, that's you're where right, Gandalf though, Gandalf says, yeah. and he passes on Glamdring and says, you know, um, gives it its name and, and says that it, uh, the elves made it long ago. Um, he says, now let me pass, come Aragorn, and he's kind of trying to show, like, I'm going to give up my stuff, here you go. And yeah. it's funny, it's, it's ironic, too, that the one person who gets to keep what he wants is yeah, Gandalf, Gandalf. right. You know, right. but, uh, so anyway, slowly he does unbuckle I almost kind of wonder if the whole sword thing... I mean, I know that this is true for Aragorn. Yeah. But yeah. in an ironic way, it, it's, it enables him to bring his staff in. I think so. That's what yeah. I, I was thinking that myself, yeah. too. I'm like, huh, wow. Like, the, the sword is such a big deal that he doesn't want to have... They overlooked the staff. They're almost just like, wow. Yeah. 
All right, at least and I got him to put his sword down. Right, right. right. It's like when we're working with our kids. Right. Like, just, just, just get this done, please. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. Well, you know, we'll take. I'll what let we can these get. other things go. Right. But just, yeah, I gotta get this one thing done. And, like like I, I just came to, you know, a heated exchange with this king. The least I want to do is upset a wizard. Right. Just, just, just go in. That's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy man. I know. So so so. Anyways, he does unbuckle though the um, the sword. Well, I want to find the line where he says that. Oh, death shall come yeah. to any man that draws Alendo's sword, save Alendo's heir. <laughs> and I'm like. Dang. What? Dang. Death will come. Yeah. So, I mean, and he would not even hand it to him. He yeah. himself he set it up against the wall. Set it up against That's the right. wall. And no said, there it shall it. stay. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, whoa. So, anyways, and then the, the best part is is that Gimli's like, all right, well, I guess uh, my little axe here, that'll keep yep. good company. That's you right. Know? If Andriel's there, if Andriel's my there. axe will be there too. Right. The, the real cool line, though, I have got it hearted. Uh, the guard stepped back and looked with amazement on Aragorn. It seems that you are come on the wings of song out of the forgotten days, he yeah. said. It shall be Lord as you command. So again, just seeing Aragorn in this light of, yeah, it's, it's he's not this this ranger that's ragged. He's this right incredible uh, heroic. We we're, we're seeing this almost every chapter now. Yeah. At first it was every once in a while. Now it seems like every chapter we're seeing him as this pinnacle of kingship. Yep. Crazy exactly. man. Exactly. All right. Um, so, yeah. Your get, staff. Huh? Your staff. Your staff, yeah. I mean. Forgive me, but that uh, must you know, be left uh, at the doors. It, yeah. Sorry, friend. Uh, I'm, it's not going to happen, man. He's yeah. got to keep his staff. I like here that he looked hard at the ash staff on which Gandalf leaned. Ash staff. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I thought it was kind of neat, just that they give him more description to it. It's almost like um, this is way off topic. Go but ahead. The, isn't the natural? Isn't his bat an ash bat? Huh? What's his? Is it Wonder Boy? Is that what his bat's called? Have you ever seen the natural with Robert Redford? No. Oh man! What best oh, baseball movie of all time? Reference, but I think huh? his bat is an ash bat. Oh really? And it's like magical. He hits home runs with it. Oh wow! Well, and then it makes, breaks. Makes sense. You love that movie, dude. Love movie, oh yeah. come on! It's like you love Hoosiers, right? Yeah. It's the baseball Hoosiers. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. I'll have to look it up. You could sound a little more excited. I'm excited. I have it on DVD. You want to borrow it? Yeah, I guess I'll borrow it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll watch it after. Um, sure. So, anyways, yeah, the Ash stuff. I, just, I thought I always think it's neat to get more description on on um, garb and just you know mm-hmm. the the weaponry and things. They've mentioned several times, and I I've skipped over it, but like the gleaming uh, green jewel that is in the mm-hmm. hilt of the of each uh, man's sword here mm-hmm. uh, in Edoras, and it's just I think it's another layer that's. That's pretty yeah. cool to yeah, the world building, you know. So absolutely. Um, but anyways, they they eventually uh, allow Gandalf in the, uh, to to pass, and you get this little block here of them describing um, as they walk into this dark. Um, as I just want to say, we're doing really good here. This is a great pace. I know we're doing wonderful. I know. Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man. Um, what else we have here? So yeah, they're they're heading through. But it, it seems so, kind of. Uh, Almost like, I don't know, man. It's it's, it's, it's a dark really place. Dark. It's a dark place. Well, yeah. even talk about their eyes having to adjust. Right. Once their eyes adjusted, they noticed more details. I think he's also a genius in the way he, you know, as much as he loved describing stuff, he could have taken like three or four paragraphs to describe all the details in this hall, but he doesn't. Yeah. He he has a way of phrasing things and describing just a little bit, so that you know, and I'm sh- I'm sure he knew artists were going to do this. That they could take those words, play on them, and continue them on to completion. Because I'm thinking about like when they produce the set, yeah. right? You'd have a little bit to go on, but you'd have a lot of like freedom as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah. really, that's brilliant for like for us as a reader too, because we imagine it in our own minds. Like, you know, um, talks about the uh, hall being uh, long and wide and filled with shadow and half lights. Half right lights. Okay, so sort of light but barely uh, mighty pillars uh, lofty roof um, talking about the sunbeams falling the thin wisps of issuing smoke from the fire um, you know talking about the stones of many hues branching runes and strange devices mm-hmm. intertwined beneath their feet and then talking about the tapestries 
Yep. You know, some of them woven, woven of rich cloth and others of half seen colors like they'd been faded. Yeah. Um, incredible. Incredible. Right. And then we see, um, you know, the one towards the end or the we, we speak of it last. Uh, and it's one that Aragorn recognizes, you know, behold, Errol the young. Uh, thus he rode out of the north to, uh, to the battle of the field of Celebrand. Yeah. Right. Which. Yeah. Whew. yeah. Awesome stuff, man. Yeah, man. It, it also, the way it kind of reads, too, is that, that on those um, bits of woven cloth, right, there's these figures, m- m- mm-hmm. maybe uh, like multiple. You yeah. Know, maybe by the time they get to the it's end of the their history. Hall. Exactly. Right. It yeah. seems like it's their history. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I thought that was really. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Really neat. And, and they did. I was really listening, and I, as I was reading, I, I'm even looking now, the description of the uh, where the throne is, right, where his yeah. seat is at. And you think about how high that is compared to what they did in the in the film. It's almost yeah. spot on with the description. Yeah, it's not super those, lofty, is it? Yeah, no. Just those, a few, three steps. Is right. it three steps up? Yeah, three steps. Yeah. Three tiers. Yep. Um, so, at which the, is kind of cool because then it's just, he's also. I, I see that as a very approachable king, yep. right? Mm-hmm. You're not at the top of like twenty steps on a throne all by yourself. He's he's right there with the people. He's he's three up. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? Yeah, and it, it, there's a sad image though of this this king who is so bent and aged and uh yeah worn out and so yeah. you get this image you actually have in front of on the second or first step there you've got grima warm warm tongue mm-hmm. uh just sitting there relaxed mm-hmm. laying leaning back against the the step it seems like um you know and then you've got uh Amer just kind of yeah well, there you go uh you know just back he's open a one walks in and goes Dang boy, right? You're working out, grimy. What's going? What's going on? Yeah. What's going on, Grandma? <laughs> oh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but don't you think it's kind of sad? You know, it's just like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, almost like the ghost of a king. Well, like, like, would you expect this? As you're, you're reading the no. first time, and it's sort of like, you know, disappointment almost. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because you, you've, you've, everyone's so tall and um, strong, and just mm-hmm. this. Kind yeah, of that's, a good, that's a good point. And even talking about his hair, um, you know, here references to the winter. His beard uh, was laid like snow upon his knees, and his eyes still burned. But his eyes still burned with a bright light, glinting as he gazed at the strangers. Right. Um, but the yeah, the description of him is awesome. Yeah. Yep. So slowly, the old man rose to his feet, leaning heavily upon a short black staff with a handle uh, of white bone. And he says, I greet you, he said. And maybe you look for welcome, but truth to tell, your welcome is doubtful here, Master Gandalf. I, not what you expected him to say either, no. again, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have ever been a herald of woe. Troubles follow you like crows. And ever the oftener, the worse. Yeah. Um, I will not deceive you. When I heard that Shadowfax had come back riderless, I rejoiced at the return <laughs> of the horse. And so it's like, as he's speaking this, it's sort of like, because there's such a difference here. Once yeah. Wormtongue is, is struck down, yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's so different. Yeah. So my question to you is, is he is under the spell? Yeah. Right. What did what did Gandalf goes on to call it leechcraft? Yeah. And I think that's almost better than witchcraft or possession or he has sucked on his he's bit on Theoden and he's sucking him. He's sucking all of the good and the life out of him. By the poison of his words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I, okay, so for instance, I'm sure we all have people in our lives, and these people should be pitied, and we should try to help them somehow not uh, not be this way. But people who are just constantly negative, negative, yeah. negative, right. negative. And if you're around them enough, you don't even realize it. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll step away from yourself, and you'll be like, wow, I'm incredibly negative now. Yeah. My words have become negative 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 like it's a poison um and it's subtle like that's how he's operated it's in subtlety um but yeah it's like this uh this influence that he has that this control without even real like theoden doesn't even realize that he's uh, doesn't have control no and that's also the genius of of warm tongue yeah I, he, he doesn't he's not this big imposing figure yeah right uh, he comes in and kind of sidles along you and Right, has you, that control. Right, have you ever been? I, I think of think of propaganda, right, and yeah. and mm-hmm. the way in which 
you know, you're, you use people's fears and different things yeah. against them, right? Yep. Uh, I almost imagine that is what Worm Tongue is kind of using. And do, news totally. is coming in, totally. and he is pulling out. Uh, where there are rays he's of editing hope. it isn't yeah it? he's he's yep. basically he's focusing on you said what and he points out the worst parts yeah dude like yeah. his takeaway is far you know different from maybe what a normal person yeah. would, would take skewed yeah. towards towards the dark right yeah. and so when he funnel maybe it comes to him first and he mm-hmm. gets in this mm-hmm. position where he funnels that then back to the king and he's using uh his words master manipulator twist. yeah but it is there is still a magical like like element to this in a, in a, a spell. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Sure. So, but yeah, because because it's it's also like it's truly the wear on his on his body, everything. Yeah. Like it's all it's what they do in the film is actually I think pretty accurate. It, to yeah. Kind of like the way his um, flesh even comes back to life, you yes. know, and blood returns to his you know yeah uh, skin and things. So he's restored. Um, we we did we miss that behind and in the shadows. There was this woman clad in white. Yeah, I mentioned it quickly. Yeah. Okay. Just, sorry. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Uh, while Grima is laying there in yes, the front, you know, yes. right in front of the king. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Amir is back there. So we notice her. Um, yeah. Tall, strong. You yep. know, uh, taking a look, looking over everything. Just wait, just you, Eowyn, place. right? What did I say? You said Eomer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Eowyn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not Eomer. <laughs> <laughs> He's locked up. <laughs> Let's get this right, okay? Oh gosh! Sorry, sorry. Aya, Aya, Aya. I was, just, I was checking myself, bro. I actually thought I, I, I said Awen, but maybe I said Aramir. Sorry. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we're hearing things. Maybe I'm hearing. Yeah. Old storm crows okay. in the house, and so. All right, you Grandma. Know, hey, twisting hey, the words. Hey. <laughs> um. So let's see. So you know, he finishes. The king finishes with, "Why yeah. should I welcome you, Gandalf mm-hmm. Stormcrow? Mm-hmm. Tell me that." And then he he slowly sat down again in his chair. And then we have this this interesting voice that speaks to us, you know? Um, Yeah, let me find it real quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You speak justly, Lord. It is not yet five days since the bitter tidings came that Theodred, your son, was slain upon the West Marches. Grandma, you little son of a gun. <laughs> we had to do that. We were having a little uh, Discord chat, and uh, that voice got stuck in our heads. It it's was one terrible. Ezra has perfected, and um, the patrons were begging him to do Grandma's voice. Was it Mandy uh, who said Mandy. we gotta gotta throw that in for Grandma? So every once in a while, guys, if, I'm sorry, but lost spell. I name you Ill News, and Ill News is Neil Guess. They said, <laughs> "Get on out here, Gandalf. Get on out, Gandalf. Get on out. Get out, here. out Gandalf." <laughs> Get up! You're not wanted here. How could you not just want to eat up every word I say? Get out of here! Ooh, that's fun to go low with it, dude. Eat up every word yeah. I say. I can't do it. That's fantastic. So yeah, so um, here here we get a little taste of his poisonous words, right? Right. right. Um, he brings up the death of his son. Um, he says, uh, you know, uh, in Aomer there's little trust. Few men would be left to guard your walls if he had been allowed to rule. So you know. Again, like you said, a, a certain slant on the truth, um, speaking in half truths. Really, that's the most dangerous thing in the world. And even now, we learn from Gondor that the Dark Lord is stirring in the east. Such is the hour in which this wanderer chooses to return. Um, yeah. And then we have Gandalf. Uh, it, it, this, ex, this interchange is so interesting. He says, "You are held wise, my friend Wormtongue, and are doubtless a great support to your master. Yet in two ways." May a man come with evil tidings. He may be a worker of evil, or he may be such as leaves well alone and comes to bring aid in time of need. That is so, uh, Worm Tongue says. But there is a third kind. Pickers of bones, meddlers in other men's sorrows, carry on fowl that grow fat on war, calling him a warmonger, essentially. And so there's this interesting back and forth. Worm Tongue is going to battle in words with Gandalf. And he thinks he's going to one-up him, and it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, he even says, you know, what aid did you bring us? Where, where are the men? Where are the shields? Where are the swords? You know? Yeah. If you haven't brought this with you, then I would call your aid, you know, worthless. Um, yeah. That's our present need, and you don't offer any of it. Right, right. Can I go back to something real fast? Yeah, you can, boy. Okay, boy. Um, <laughs> the, the name that is given to Gandalf. I just did a quick little yeah, yeah. search. Lath spell, right? He calls him Lath spell. Yes. Um, maybe I'm saying that wrong. 
Um, yeah, Lost Ball. It's, yeah. it's counterpart, though. It's actually, I did not know. I just looked this up. Um, he's pulling from, it really means evil news. So in the old English, sure. it's something that kind of means it was actually uh, derived from it's okay. something I can't pronounce, uh, or like, like Leo's spell. And uh, last spell, whatever it may be. And the opposite, it's counter, it's direct opposite, is gospel. Gospel. Wow. Yeah, which means oh, that's cool. good news. Truth. Yeah. Good news, right. truth, right. And so he's naming him the uh, the opposite of, of gospel. I just thought Whoa. that was really cool, right? That is cool. Yeah, because there is this whole, you know, I, we were talking beforehand, the Anglo-Saxon tie-in, the Beowulf connection, yep. all that kind of stuff, and how he, you know, loves to look at the the old languages and the development of language. Um, this which guy's is, turning to be a real grandma. He's me something else. <laughs> Shamey. Sorry. Where <laughs> you at, Bow Wolf? Come on. <laughs> you're going to get uh, kind of annoying. Come us. save us. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there, just I mean, if you guys like us, then it's then, no surprise. Then, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so let's see. Did, have you got to the part where he talks about him being a third... Like uh, yes. microphones, metal. Okay, yes. cool. Three Good. ragged wanderers in gray, and you yourself, the most beggar-like of the four. Jeez, dude. Right. The courtesy of your hall is somewhat lessened of late, Thoden, son of Thangal. I love how Gandalf, he's, not, he's done addressing right. uh, Grimma at this point. Um, you know, he says, Seldom has any lord of Rohan received three such, such guests. Weapons they have laid at your door that are worthy many that... that are worthy many immortal men, even the mightiest. Gray is their raiment, for the elves clad them, and thus they have passed through the shadow of great perils to your hall. Right? Saying yeah. that, actually, it's an honor to have us before you, uh, and that you've never seen our company before. Um, then it is true, as Aomer reported, that you are in league with the sorceress of the Golden Wood. Okay, so again, this, and almost kind of wondering, like, hey, did this not, I don't know, did this whole idea of who Galadriel is, was that not even started by Wormtongue? Or is that a seed that Saruman planted long ago? Yeah. I think you know what something. I mean? Well, and, and also, I, 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 okay, it's, it's partly, I think, that the they're so closed off. Yeah. Which you don't know. I mean, you, you don't Yeah, really I mean, she understand. would be like a witch in the forest, I right. guess. You, yeah. 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 You, you, so it would just take one word from, yeah, Wormtongue or Saruman to kind of, you know, yeah. to kind of. Yep. So anyways, yep. um. Gandalf, though, is Gimli, once he hears an insult to his lady. Clutch my, I'm going to go beat you up. He's stepping forward. Yeah, he you is. know, he's ticked. That was cool, wasn't and, it? And Gandalf kind of just, you can see him just put a, put a little hand on yeah. him, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, hold I got on this, there, bud. friend. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was, <laughs> that was, oh, that I was thought Gimli. You meant the, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant the Gandalf singing part here. It's no, that's, little, that's all you, bud. No, I I've had even, to sing for Aragorn. This is you singing for Gandalf. No, I, it's it's really him just singing about, um, you know, home is behind. Not that. <laughs> that's not what he's singing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, Gladriel. Uh, so he's singing about Gladriel and just talking about, you know, seldom have walked the feet of men. Few mortal eyes have seen the light that lies uh, there, ever long and bright. Gladriel, Gladriel. And so he's just kind of reminding, almost like he's singing to himself. Mm-hmm. I don't really know that he's even me- meaning to sing this out loud necessarily. Uh, to me, it's just sort of like... He's softly saying it. it softly says, singing yeah. and just sort of... Isn't that interesting that he would just break out into a little bit of a song here, a real quick song that would calm Gimli down, you know, and also bring... Give him some strength as well. Give him some, and let, let, you know, let people know that this is... Um, that she is real that she is a friend of his and, right. and things like that so. i mean he was naked and she gave him clothes that's right so it might even be her outfit we don't know right <laughs> could be <laughs> all right so he says uh the wise speak only of what they know grima uh some s- son of galman uh a witness uh, witless uh worm you have become therefore be silent and keep your forked tongue behind your teeth love that line uh, i have not passed passed through fire and death to bandy crooked words with the serving man uh, till the lightning falls. He raised his staff, and there was a roll yeah, of thunder. Nuts. The sunlight was blotted out from the eastern windows, and the whole hall became suddenly dark as night. The fire faded to sudden embers. Only Gandalf could be seen. Only Gandalf could be seen, mm-hmm. right? Standing white and tall before the blackened earth, right? Uh, <laughs> in the gloom, they heard the hiss of Wormtongue's voice. Did I not counsel you, Lord, to forbid his staff? That, was that good. fool Hama, he has betrayed us. There was a flash as if from uh, lightning had cloven the roof. Then all was silent. Wormtongue, 
sprawled on his face. <laughs> on his face. I, I love it's on his face too. He's just sprawled. Knock there. me on my face, boy. <laughs> Uh, and, and so he strikes him down. I mean, simply, yeah. plain and simple. Um, you know, he, he draws on his power, and it's a it's a pretty cool moment. We read it quickly, but you you can imagine um, maybe it wasn't as quick. Maybe it was a, a slow sort of like sure, yeah. You know, kind of like I told you not to. You know, like yeah. they do a decent job. They do a of great. That. I, I felt uh, like great. I mean, job they, it comes that. right out like, but but just Grima's reaction to the staff. Yeah, you get that here. Yes, um, I like that. You know, again, he's had it the whole time. Maybe right. he didn't reveal it. Maybe he had it under his cloak or something. I don't know. But there it is. It's out, if you know what I mean. I also think, too, like this is a pretty bold move by Gandalf because I, I, I don't know. I don't know how the the senses of more elite beings work. But I would think like him changing the weather like this suddenly might almost be kind of like a like a ping on a map of of some greater power's presence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if someone was tapped, if, if Saruman, for instance, was tapped into, and maybe, I mean, you know, he knows that they're there anyway. It doesn't matter. But if, if some greater being was paying attention, be like, wow, that's, that was an interesting surge of power I just felt to the yeah. West. You exactly. Know? Just kind of interesting. So that's how important it is that he... You know, gets the Odin to snap out of this to, well, to stop listening to Warm Tongue. Yeah, let me let to me listen to his words. Yeah, this is interesting too. So after that's done, after he's 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 sprawled out there, Warm Tongue is is laid out. Uh, he beckons to Theoden, yeah. and he asks him, you know, basically, do you want my help? Yeah. Um, the darkness seemed to be clear uh, through the opening. Uh, could be seen this could be seen high and far, a patch of shining sky. And he's continuing to talk. He says, not all is dark. Take courage, yeah. Lord of the Mark, for better help you will not find. Yeah. And so he's, he's encouraging him to he, and he ask again, will you hear this counsel, you know, that I would give you? And uh, I bid you come out of your doors and look abroad. Too long have you sat in the shadows and trusted to twisted tales and crooked promptings. Yeah. And he slowly gets out of his chair. Uh, a faint light grew in the hall again. And the woman hastened to the king's side, taking his arm. And uh, with faltering steps, the old the old man came down from the dais, and placed his uh, and, and paced softly through the hall. Wormtongue remained lying on the floor. They came to the door, and Gandalf knocked. He hasn't responded to Gandalf at all. No, he's just up walking around. Yep. So, it's it's kind of interesting to me that there is no verbal, you know. Uh, it's, it's not like yes, I will take your counsel. Right. Right. No. He's just very mm-hmm. still. You know, kind of slowly coming out of this. I feel like. What and if he wasn't like just shocked at what happened too? You know, this display, and you'd just be like, uh, uh, uh. I mean, especially if you're yeah. you've been aged uh, prematurely and you've had this influence on you. If you wouldn't just be like almost dumbfounded. Yeah. Like, dang, wow. Uh, but I this can, is a different Gandalf. You this can, is a different Gandalf than anyone's ever seen. Right. Well, I also feel like these these sense of the haze is is lifting, as you say. Yeah. And and he's coming back to his senses, and so movement, the yes. first thing, standing up. Yeah. Uh, moving around the room, yeah. pacing. Yeah. Uh, they go to the door, uh, open. He cried, "The Lord of the Mark comes forth." The door is rolled open, uh, and I think that's Gandalf still speaking. I don't know if that's yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, I think so. Um, and he tells him to send your guards down to the stairs, uh, foot. And uh, you, lady, leave him a while with me. Mm-hmm. I will care for him. Yep. Go, Eowyn, sister, daughter, uh, said the old king. The time for fear is past. That's mm-hmm. the first thing he says. Yep, to her. So once he gets outside, I feel like he's. that's when he says the, the, the time for fear uh, is past. I got to read this next paragraph because yeah. it's amazing, and I want your reaction to it. The woman turned and went slowly into the house. As she paused, the doors... As she passed the doors, she turned and looked back. Grave and thoughtful was her glance as she looked on the king with, a, with cool pity in her eyes. Very fair was her face, and her long hair was like a river of gold. Slender and tall she was in her white robe girt with silver, but strong she seemed and stern as steel, a daughter of kings. Thus Aragorn, for the first time in the full light of day, beheld Eowyn, Lady of Rohan, and thought her fair fair and cold like a morning a pale spring that has not yet come to womanhood and she now was suddenly aware of him tall heir of kings wise with many winters gray cloaked hiding a power that yet she felt 
For a moment, still a stone, she stood. Then turning swiftly, she was gone. Yeah. It's a moment where they both notice each other. And there's another one later as yep. well with the cops. And it's just interesting too. Like, I mean, I see where they got the whole like triangle-ish thing for the film. Sure. But it is just sort of like this, just this acknowledgement. Yeah. It's just beautiful the way it's written. I don't know. Like it's, it's a moment that's slowed down. Um, it's a moment that reveals both of them as who they are. You know, a daughter of kings and it, and the king of kings. Yeah. Right? V- very interesting. Well, Almost it, like they would be a good match for one another. Well, it does. I mean, yeah. But it, it also, I think, is a recognition of power. You know? Yeah. And, and, and she is a strong... Uh, well, and how, how crucial is she? She's huge. It's huge. Yeah, she, exactly. So you talk about some foreshadowing, you know. Uh, there it is. The foundation that needs to be laid. It's, it's laid right here. So... Um, we now lay, we lay in foundation. <laughs> so now Gandalf, though, uh, look, he says, look out upon your land, breathe in yeah. the free air again. Yeah. All right. And there's a really cool part here. What I want to find, um, let me see if I can find it. The, uh, uh, there's a part where he speaks to him and only he can hear him. So Gandalf whispers counsel mm-hmm. to Theoden. Did you get to that part where, and, and basically, Theoden is the only one, it was only for his ears. Because yeah, they are the, talking where everyone can hear. It's the high seat where Theoden's sitting down and Gandalf is almost kind of sitting on the, on the ground talking to him. Right? When, Han, when Hama had been summoned and gone again, Gandalf led Theoden to a stone seat and then sat himself before the king upon the topmost stair. Aragorn and his companions stood nearby. Yeah, I mean, we get we hear what he says uh, though, go. right? No, so there, uh, yeah, well, at first we do. Yeah, there there is no time to tell, right? But if you move on um, to tell you all that you should hear, said Gandalf. Yet if my hope is not cheated, a time will come ere long when I can speak more fully. Behold, you are come into a peril greater than even the wit of Wormtongue could weave into your dreams. Okay, that next paragraph. Yeah. yeah. So Quickly he says, now Gandalf spoke. His voice was low and secret, and none save the king heard what he said. Yeah. Yeah, but ever um, as he spoke, the light shone brighter yeah, in Theoden's eyes. eyes. Mm-hmm. And at the last, he rose from his seat to his full height and Gandalf beside him. And together, they looked out from the high place towards the east. And so I want you just to take a moment and think about this. Hmm. Put this in your mind. Um, this wizard has shown up and yep. he is whispering counsel to maybe an old friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know, I know he's not as close as, as he and Aragorn, but this image of him taking a counselor, a good counselor there yeah. and standing tall again. And this energy coming back, this light coming back to his eyes. Yep. Uh, it's powerful. It's kind of a really powerful moment. And what did he say to him there? Right. What, did, what did he speak to him? We, I, I don't think we, he does talk later on about, and you can assume that he's telling him maybe, uh, what's going on, reminding him of his strength, maybe telling him who he is. Um, yeah. He says, they bring up the ring um, here in a bit, mm-hmm. and, and maybe what is going on. They can't talk about it right. in full, and he can't even but tell. There is some hope in that. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. But he can, he can lay, lay out for him you know, this, this need, this dire need mm-hmm. um, that's going on. Maybe he's even telling them, because you know, we, we got last chapter kind of this view into Gandalf's mind about what he foresaw happening. Mm-hmm. Maybe he lays out some prophecy that he has been given, some some view of the future that gives yeah. Theoden hope, right? Yeah. Maybe he, he that's all he needs. Because right now, he, you know, from all the information he's been fed, he feels hopeless. He feels like there's no, there's no chance. Yeah. Right? Well, and I think with the, one of the coolest images, the, the, the other part, the crucial part to him standing beside him strong and no one can hear them mm-hmm. and they're just there by themselves mm-hmm. looking and this king has come back into his own mm-hmm. and which way are they facing where are they looking towards the east, east. Yep. and so yeah, it's it's like which is where their enemy lies but exactly. it's also where the sun rises yes it's both exactly so um, but but it's that idea that I feel like this is coming and will you rise yeah. do you I mean he, he's he's hitting some heartstrings in there like he's, oh, yeah. he's pulling it uh the inner workings of this king. He knows yeah. what to what to pull on uh, to bring out the best in him. Yeah. Which is, you know, uh, Grima was doing the opposite. Yeah. He knew where, where, where to pull to, to bring out you know, the, the worst. And so yeah. he is doing, undoing that weaving um, that yeah. uh, Grima had done. Holy crap. 
That's that's just the way I saw nice. it, the way that I kind oh, of yeah, thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. See, and look what you did there, too. You dove into one paragraph. You I dove into this. one paragraph that, that most of us just breeze right through, and you expanded that. That's, that's beautiful. It's a good image, yeah. Yeah. Um, because then his voice, it comes back to, it's loud and clear, and he says, that way lies our hope, where sits our greatest fear. Yeah. Now they're looking east again. Right. Doom hangs still on a thread, yet hope is, hope there still is, uh, if we can but stand unconquered yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Buy some time. Yeah. Distract, buy some <laughs> yeah. time. And if that's your task in this king, no, I mean, like, and in, in once he, he learns of, you know, Aomer's request for send everything that you can to the West, yeah. you know, and to, I mean, yeah. throw everything you have there. Yeah. It's getting serious here. Yeah, man. It's getting real serious. Uh, all right. So now, um, so they, they, they're, they're all turned eastward, as we said. Yeah. This is where we bring up the bit about the ring. Correct? Yeah. Where yeah. now was the ring bearer? Um, how thin indeed was the thread upon which the doom still hung? And this is just kind of their thoughts, isn't it? It's their thoughts. It's our hunter's thoughts yeah. and Gandalf as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they had and sits down again. And he's kind of uh, as if weariness still struggled to master him against the will of Gandalf. He turned and looked at his great house. Alas, he said uh, that these evil days should, should, should be mine um, and should come in my old age instead of the peace that I have earned. And he's on point there, you know, like yeah. he's an older king. He's ready to, he was ready to pass this on to his son yeah. who had just died. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a sad time. Um, but yeah, his son had just died. And, and so this task is his. Um, yeah. He says, alas, Bormir the brave, he mentions him. Yeah. And uh, I love this line, the young perish and the old the linger, linger. Yep. withering. So it talks about his, his, how his withered fingers are. I'm sorry, did wrinkles hand, wrinkled hands uh, kind of clutch his knees there? And then it's Gandalf's next line. Your yep. fingers would remember their old strength better if they grasped a sword hilt. Yeah. You know, not your knees, right? Right. Get that sword in your hand. Well, they're wondering where his sword is. A lot I, of things. I put it away somewhere, boy. <laughs> it's stolen. Old Grima's yep. back. Uh, and it is stolen. So they. Uh, Again, just another little subtle way that he robbed them of his power. Right. To, right. Like. Yeah. My lord, you don't need your sword. You know? Yeah. 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 Let me put um, it away. A relic of your powers of old. Right. Just the little slimy ball. Yeah. I can't remember what part. I think we skipped the part where they send for Aemir. Like, they actually send for him. I yeah. He's right. Yeah, we we kind of brushed over that part. Mm -hmm. Because the voice that comes in now, when he's wondering where his sword is, you know, it says, uh, take this, dear lord. Th this this whole next half page, it's I just had awesome. building chills, man. It's so and how good. amazing this would have looked on, on film, right? Yeah. Yep. And, and when you hear "Take this, dear Lord," you don't know who it's going to be. It, you, know, I, you could it could be Aragorn, it could be G Gandalf saying this to him again. Like it's sort of a, a surprise that it's Eomer. Yeah, exactly. Right, and that's yeah. it's even it's like this dramatic reveal, right? And, uh, yeah, he says the sword has ever been in your service. Yep. You know, and uh, it's just kind of neat. In his hand, he held um, a drawn sword, and as he knelt, he offered the hilt to his master. Yeah. How comes this, said they in sternly. Um, yeah. And so, uh, where was the old man whom they had left crouching yeah. in his chair or leaning on his stick? So yeah. they're kind of amazed, right, that he's, yeah. that he's in this uh, I guess state. Could, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, let's see. Oh, he talks about, uh, so Hama is kind of getting, uh, you know, picked on a little bit here, right? For, for letting everybody, for going and, and, and letting them in and, yeah. you know, um, and then bring an Aomer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> without, uh, everybody's you know. just kind of doing yeah. stuff without the King's permission yeah. here. What's going on? Yep. You know, so there's, there's that, but yeah, he slowly stretches out his hands there and his fingers, you know, took the hilt and it seemed to the watchers, the firmness and the strength returned to his thin arm. Suddenly he lifted the blade and swung it. And this is just a, such a, is this part of the stuff you had underlined, right? Yeah, it's just interesting too. It's just interesting. This is, um, this is Aomer's sword. Yeah, This exactly. isn't even Theoden's sword. No, it's just, right. it's just really, really cool. Um, yeah, uh, slowly Theoden stretched forth his hand. His fingers took the hilt. It seemed to the watchers that firmness and strength returned to his thin arm. Suddenly he lifted the blade and swung it shimmering and whistling in the air. Then he gave a great cry. His voice rang clear as he chanted in the tongue of Rohan a call to arms. Arise now, arise, riders of Theoden. 
dire deeds awake. Dark is it eastward. Let horse be bridled, horn be sounded for Theralingus. And the guards, thinking that they were summoned, thinking they were summoned, right? Yeah, yeah. Sprang up the stair. They looked at their lord in amazement, and then, as one man, they, as one man, they drew their swords and laid them at his feet. Command us, they said. West to Theoden Hall, cried Aramir. It is joy. It is a joy to see uh, to us to see you return into your own. Never again shall it be said, Gandalf, that you come only with grief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Ah, oh, goodness, man. Um, I, I, can I make a quick reference here? I love that they yeah. call, he calls him um, sister, sister son. son. <laughs> yeah. I just I've been. What's your new name for Winnie? So uh, brother daughter. Brother daughter. <laughs> brother daughter. That's my. <laughs> yep. That's what I'm gonna call her. I love it, man. But anyways, really cool. Yeah. Um, they actually bring. Is this where they bring out Grima? Is he back? Grima's coming back, boy. <laughs> um, almost. Yeah, almost. Get we have there. this this thing here where Gandalf saying, you know, let's replace Aomer with with Grima here, right? He's mm-hmm. a trustworthy man rather than the crooked mind of the your you know your advisor you've had. Right. He's kind of um, they're, they're 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 making plans here, right? So they're kind yeah, of yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's talking about every man that can ride should be sent west at once, as as Aomer counseled you. We must first destroy the threat of Saruman while we have time. If we fail, we fall. If we succeed, then we face the next task. task. Meanwhile, your people that are left, the women and children and the old, should fly to the refuges um, that you have in the mountains. Uh, Were they not prepared against just such an evil day as this? Let them take provision, but delay not, nor burden themselves with treasures, great or small. It is their lives that are at stake. Yeah. And then Theoden, you know, doesn't even wait a beat. Right. Sounds like good counsel to me now. Right. Let all my folk get ready. But my, uh, but you, my guest, truly, Gandalf, that the courtesy of my hall is lessened. You have ridden through the night. You know, let's get you some food. Let's give you some rest as, you know, hastily yeah. as we can, but still. Yeah. yeah. But we still have to make, uh, we need to with thank him. you for, yeah. Right. And, and re- restore the courtesy of my home. Yeah. So it's crazy. They, they're, they're, they're prepping for battle then. I mean, they're, they've, yeah. they've sounded sort of the, the call. You know, has, yeah. has gone out and uh, gathering everyone that, that they can. And he gives them, you know, this is where uh, Helm's Deep is kind of brought up too. Yep. that. Like not once we leave here. Yes, we are leaving these people unprotected. Yep. Where do you send these people during that time? Right. You know, and he encourages the king at first to take, you know, his people, you know, to yep. uh, Helm's Deep. Right. Um, is it is it Helm's Deep? The hold of of, oh, um, of Dunharrow in the hills. OK, so there. Right, th- that's where they're going for it. So lead your yeah, people swiftly right. to the hold of Dunharrow in the hills. Okay. Right, and and this that's where he says, "No, I'm going to go fight right. with my people." Yep, yeah, yeah and, and 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 he won't. So they're kind of deciding then who you know could uh, lead the people. Yeah, there, correct. Yeah, yep. and that's where we get uh, Grima back in. Oh, Grima comes back in the picture. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Brings his sword out. Right, he gets his sword. Yeah, finally returned to him. Um, sorry, let me read this here. Here, Lord, is Herogrim, your ancient blade. Um, who's saying this? Hama said. It was found in his chest. Loth was he to render up the keys. Many other things are there which men have missed. You lie, said Warm Tongue, and this sword your master himself gave into my keeping. So we get this kind of back and forth of. Wormtongue getting his last, like, it's his last go at trying to influence the That's king. That's right. Yep. Uh, the king's been won back, but he's, you know, still uh, denying all the all these charges that are laid on him from Gandalf yep. and from, from Hama. Um, yeah. And and saying even, this is this line's hilarious, Dear Lord, cried Wormtongue, it is as I feared. This wizard has bewitched you. Are none to be left to defend the Golden Hall? After, you know, he learns of the plans. Mm-hmm. Hall of your fathers and all your treasure. Uh, none to guard the Lord of the Mark, and it's almost like you know he knows he knows the plan. Yeah. He knows uh, you know Saruman's uh, mind, and clearly uh, you know to get him to stay in Edoras is is what Saruman would have wanted. You know it's less protected; uh, it could be more easily besieged, and so that's even in, even now when he has no hope to, to influence the king, he's still trying to get him to 
stay here. Right, and it's, it's Thayden yeah. who says to him that, you know, no, we're not leaving anybody behind, including you. Yeah, no one's going to be here. Yeah, get, your, get the rust off your sword. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and that upsets him. Mercy, you know, right? He's, mercy, Lord. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. Uh, have pity, you know, on one, yeah. one worn out in your service. Yeah. Send me not from your side. Um, and he still thinks the king is not going. Yeah. Right. And that's when the yeah. king, you know, they didn't let him know that, you know, that's fine. I won't send you from my side. You're coming with me <laughs> and I'm riding to war, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's discouraging. And eventually um, he, he then tries to um, he's, he's, he's w- trying to weasel out of this. Right. And they eventually give him a choice. Either he, he actually has a choice. He can ride to war with them and really prove himself. If that be if, that, if he is if he is worthy, you know, yeah. or. Uh, he can take a horse and he can go wherever he wants. Yep. But he has to leave. You know? And Gandalf even says it's just it would be just to kill him. You know what I mean? That would be a just move. Yeah. But uh yeah, that, that's Does he not, say that? Wow. Not yeah. the decision that, that's made. Yep. Yep. Um I also love too this little description, this visual you can see. Wormtongue looked from face to face. In his eyes was the hunted look of a beast seeking some gap in the ring of his enemies. He licked his lips with a long pale tongue. Yeah, man, you just you can totally see him, envision him, right? And, and so he has a little um, tidbit here. He starts to kind of question Wormtongue about his connection to Saruman. What did he promise you? Yeah. You know, what 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 are you um, in for? And uh, who, right? So you th- then you get this connection to to Eowyn, yes, right? And how he was possibly looking for to get close to her. Maybe that was yep. the prize that he wanted. You know, yeah, the gift that he wanted. For his services, yeah. and uh, as Aemir, you know uh, her brother, who knows, who's yeah. seen this, he's seen he this for a this. long time, yep. right? And uh, you know, that, that's a reason that he would have slain him before, uh, forgetting the law of the hall. But there are other reasons, and uh, you know, Gandalf just lets him know that she's safe now. Okay, um, and this is where they kind of give him the choice. You also have Gandalf to telling him to get down on his belly, yeah, calling him a snake, absolutely, no longer referring to him as a he but an it, right. Um, so just, yeah, man, crazy. I know, I know. And he kind of breaks off. He's uh, eventually he just he bears his teeth, and he's hissing under his breath. And he spat before the king's feet. And he yeah. darted to one side, fled down the stairs. And he says, "After him, see that no one does him any harm. Um, you know, but that they also don't hinder him. Yeah. Give him a horse if he wishes it. And then, boom, he's on his way. Yeah. I love that they also the guards wash." The stones that Warm Tongue had defiled. Yeah. They take water from the basin and, and wash it away. Crazy. Man. Uh, so, th- so they go into the hall, and, and uh, th- they're going to have this um, uh, time here where, where they get to eat and, and rest up just a little mm-hmm. bit. And uh, Gandalf sort of asked the question, how far back does this treachery uh, go? You yeah. know, um, yeah. he was not always evil. Once, uh, I do not doubt that he was a friend of Rohan. Yeah. And, even with his, and even when his heart grew cold... Or colder, he found you. Um, he found you useful still, huh? Yeah, talking about Saruman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that kind of goes along with that. What we were talking about way back with Treebeard too. Yeah. You know, Treebeard. His theory is that he always had a plan, right? That he right. always, um, the way he took it, and maybe it's maybe it's because in the end. Uh, he he took he took the evil route that he never truly was had a desire to get to know him in his forest. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. Yeah. So what's this line here? So he says, "But when I ask, but when I escaped and warned you, then the mask was torn for those who would see. After that, worm tongue played dangerously, always seeking to delay you to prevent your full strength from being gathered. He was crafty. So I think that's when Gandalf went he came back, went back to, and to he, warn him. He, he leaves with shadow, shadow facts. facts. Yep. yep. Right, so he did warn him there, but Saruman had been in and out of there, um, acting as a friend, you know, um, laying his trap, setting this all up for yeah. a long time. Yeah. So. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, and then they it's talk crazy. about Aramir's decision to defy his king's orders and basically how good that was that he yeah. was able to intercept the um, the hobbits, you know, and, uh, and uh, kill that orc, um, you know, pack that was moving across the land. And that was a good thing. And Thayden says, I owe him much. You know, yeah. uh, faithful uh, heart may have, um, you know, forward tongue. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's, he's happy with him. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And I think he makes him, uh, like coming up here, that he'll, he'll name him heir. 
Yeah. Right. But like right before they 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 head off. Yeah. Now, he wants to reward Gandalf, and so this is where you get into the gift giving. He gives him a gift. Yeah, he offers all all of them. Yes. A gift. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. And then so Gandalf, he wants uh, Gandalf just give me fly, shadow facts. Shadow facts, man. I'll that's, take them. That's, you know, he says that they they formed this bond between their heart. You know, like there's yeah. this bonding yeah. that has happened there. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it is. It's 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 one of those things. It's kind of like you could see why that would maybe tick off somebody, though. Can I say that because yeah, you know when you learn about his the the history here, um, with with their horses and and how to you know it took the the Lord of the Mark to to tame um, that level of horse. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like eh, really you're really? taking the best. You're gonna yeah, ask from back. But. Yeah, he says already there was a bond of love between them. Gandalf says that about he and Shadowfax. Bond of love. Yeah. But he does give them. He does give him gla- gladly, and he, it's yeah. a great gift. Yeah. Uh, there's none like Shadowfax, right? So. And none ever shall return again like Shadowfax. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Um, and, and this is where we get that reference back to Felleroff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Says that in him, one of the mighty steeds of old has returned. Yep. And so it's our guess that that's who he's, he's referencing, For, yeah. right? Yep. Um. So now the uh, Aragorn and the uh, Legolas and Take Gimli, some armor and stuff. they get yeah they mm-hmm. they get they get some. Uh, Gimli gets uh, Theoden's boyhood helmet. Yeah, and his shield doesn't he? Yeah, he gets his shield right, which is which is yeah. this green shield with a white horse on it, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty neat. So he said, "May it keep you well." It was made for me and uh, Thingol's day while I was still just a boy, mm-hmm. and he bowed. He says, "I am proud, Lord of the Mark, to bear your device." Yeah. Uh, so. We really, get this, we're coming. We get this other moment real quick with yeah. Eowyn oh, and, yeah. and Aragorn. Right. Um, the king now rose, and at once Eowyn came forward bearing wine. Ferthu Theoden Hal, she said. Um, Receive now this cup and drink in happy hour. Health be with thee at thy going and coming. Theoden drank from the cup, and she then uh, proffered it to the guests. Mm-hmm. As she stood before Aragorn, she paused suddenly and looked upon him, and her eyes were shining. And he looked down upon her face and smiled. But as he took the cup, his hand met hers, and he knew that she trembled at the, cl- at the touch. Hail, Aragorn, son of Arathorn, she said. Hail, Lady of Rohan, he answered. But his face now was troubled, and he did not smile. What's going on? What's going on there, man? You there's, tell me what's happening. There's some tension, bro. T- 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 there's some tension. Tell me what's happening. Why is she trembling <sighs> at his touch? What's going on? Well, she loves him. Okay. Um, I don't know to what level or degree whether she's in awe of this mighty figure or if she thinks i would love to i'd love to be with this man you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. yeah um, i mean you're a mighty man i'm sure you've experienced this i'm sure yeah. you've experienced a moment where yeah. you know your influence has caused yeah. a um yeah. a woman to tremble you yeah. know i mean i've trembled in your presence before i know uh and uh you know there was there's no even tension going on there it's just because right. you know right you're a, you're a magical man but you know i and and then him, I think, so immediately my mind goes to, <laughs> I just kept a serious demeanor though. <laughs> when he talks about, you know, what where Tolkien says, but his face now was troubled and he did not smile. Um, I think he's thinking about Arwen. I think he's thinking about Arwen's um, fate being tied to the ring. Um, I think he probably also thinks about, you know, that Arwen could leave if she wanted. She could go to the Undying Lands. Uh, she wouldn't have to face death someday. Oh, I, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. Uh, you know, is he troubled because, you know, he thinks. In some respects, wouldn't it be a lot easier and neater for him to just marry, yeah, another mortal? Yes. You know, it would be simpler that way. You know, the love that he has now is it's a great love. It's a, um, you know, one that parallels Baron and Luthien, right? And we know that the end of that was tragic, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and and also a lot of hardships along the way. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, and she's a beautiful woman. Yes. And she's from a, a, an area that he used to love to, you know, he spent time in yeah. as a younger man. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I just wonder, man, there's just, there's something going on and I, I don't really know what it is and it's, yeah. it's intriguing. So clearly, it clearly they thought there was something there and so they build it up in the film and yeah. you know there it's, it is I think they're just nice little teases I, I, and I think that it's like there's no there doesn't have to be an answer yeah there's a reason 
you know, we're not told what Aragorn's thinking. I, like, like I said in the beginning, I think it's the recognition of power. There's this, yeah. both are kind of like powerful figures and um, carry this weight with yeah. each of them. Yeah. You know, so there's that. But Did anyways. That, my brother. Yeah. Speaking of carrying weight, um, yeah. I don't know, man. Thinking about our future together. You and me. Yeah, our future. Yeah. Starting to tremble a little bit. Of course you are. Thinking about starting a, I don't know, Lord of the, the Rings, Rings podcast. podcast. Oh, boy. That's something you'd want to do I don't someday? know if we're ever going to. I just don't know, man. Yeah, we can do it. Names got to be right. As That's true. Names got to be solid, right, correct, Yeah. on point. Okay. You got any well, ideas? I got an idea. Um, the Pick and Flick podcast. Wow. Pick and Flick. Some people would get that. Some, I don't know if everyone would. That might no, be kind of an inside. That's going to be an inside joke, I guess. Um, yeah. There was an old show called My Name is Earl. What if we went on that and... Yeah. My name is Errol Podcast. Yeah. What's yeah, wrong with that? Nothing. Huh? Anything? Okay. All right. <laughs> Got any more ideas? Wow. We're really uh, scraping the. Excuse bottom. me? What? Excuse me. <laughs> this is your idea. Uh, what is it? What's the next one? Uh, the Hama 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 Podcast. I like that. Hama yeah. Hama Hama. Um, in the Hall of Hrothgar or er, Theoden? Yeah. Podcast? Sure. We're getting there. Uh, maybe one of these days. Right. We'll look to the east and yes, the light will return to our eyes. Maybe Gandalf will whisper something secret in our ear and uh, let us know. You know what he'll whisper? Well, what's that? Get rid of that warm tom boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let's, let's finish this chapter. We're almost in done. In all seriousness, guys, what kind of guy with the moniker Worm Tongue thinks he's going to get a, a woman like Aomer? Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't it? Who wants to kiss a warm tongue? It's weird. The image alone is shocking. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Cray. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's all, 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 all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. That's pretty um, much it. That's it's, it's the chapter. Yeah. No, they have to elect. They decide that uh, Eowyn is going to be, you know, uh, the one who will lead them. Yeah. Right. She's uh, fearless. Right, she's fearless and high-hearted. Right, and it actually it's the people who who choose her. Right, so they, they he kind of acts, you know, he speaks out, yeah. um, you know, into this house, and and they they want her. Right, she's another uh, one of his descendants that, and and he's happy with that. Yeah, you know, and actually here in just a bit we're going to see her in mail, and she, she's given a sword. Yeah, you know, and she's charged with leading the people uh, to 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 safety to shelter. To Dunharrow, isn't it cool too how they go to Dunharrow in the films they all go to Helm's Deep and they go back into the glittering caves and they're all in one location but yeah. in the books they go to Dunharrow which is in the films where we start film yeah. three you know the mustering of the Rohirrim and all this stuff it's it's kind of cool it's interesting yes it is yeah um, okay let's see yep yeah, so now the the king um, so the king uh, shall come again if you're not uh, oh so this is Aragorn reassuring um, her you know that uh Fear not, uh, not the west, but the east. Uh, does our doom await us? Yeah. So he's kind of saying that we're we're heading uh, west, but really we're taking care of Eisenhower. Yeah, we'll take care of. It. Really, it's a confidence that yeah. you know, we're, once we go east, that's when you should I mean, worry for us. Really, Aragorn's ready to battle again, dude. He's ready to whip out that Andril, slice some orc heads off, and he's excited to be back with his homies in Rohan. Yeah, right. He's excited right. to be back with his homie Rohans. Yep, and. I don't blame the guy. Yeah. Tall, blonde-haired dudes who know how to use their swords. You know. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. So, it's time, though. Right, my friend? Yeah, let's it's, go. Come it's on. It's time. All right. Let's time. Yeah. Let's get Shadow Come Facts. Come on, Shadow Facts. Right. Giddy up, boy. Uh, well, Gimli is... First, we have a nice little conversation with him. Uh, just kind of talking about the idea that he doesn't really want to... He'd rather walk. Yeah. He'd rather just run alongside. Yeah. Uh, because he's sick of Gandalf's saddlebag bumping into him while he's on Shadowfax. Um, you know, it's, it's, Good luck uh, keeping up, Gimli. It's Amir who kind of says, you can ride with me. On Firefoot, right? On Firefoot, yeah. yeah. And so he'll have Legolas. He says, as long as my friend Legolas can ride to the right. You know, and then he said, oh, yeah, I'll have him and I'll have Aragorn yeah. as well Man. on either side. Man. So that's a company and a half right there, right? Yeah, it is, boy. Um, so let's see. Yeah, and he's just talking about the, like they're, they're prepping for battle and... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, they they kind of move on here towards the end. So it says, so be it. Um, oh, they're they're talking about the Lady Galadriel again, 
And that, that was sort of what got him into that. Basically that like, you know, make sure you don't insult her anymore. Okay. So before he kind of, uh, you know, agrees to, yeah. to ride with him, he has to get some assurances there. Right. Man. And so yeah. I think they're writing love letters back and forth. I think they are. Yes. I All think right. shadow facts is delivering them. Maybe shot like an arrow. Sure. Why not? Behold yeah. the white rider. Yes. Our king and the white rider. Yep. Our king. Fourth. Erlingus. <laughs> Yeah, it's so great. Uh, it's so great. The, the, this is this is just an awesome sort of, you know, the trumpets are sounded, the horses reared and neighed, uh, spears clashed on shields, and the king raised his hand. Uh, it's, it's you know, it, with, a, with a rush like the sound onset of a great wind, uh, the last host of, of Rohan rode thundering into the west. Yeah, spears glittering. Man. Spears glittering. Spears glittering. Glittering Spears podcast. Gl- glittering Spears. There's a name. There it is. Way to go, Az. I, just this thundering, this pounding of them yeah. going into the west, and they're such a quick turn. At, the well, turning of the tide, the, the tide turning. It's it's hard to see a tide turn in the desert. So, but you gotta is. go to where the ocean is. That's right. Um, yeah, and I just it's like it's crazy too because you think the, the tone here is very different. Yeah. Right from the films, yeah. I just keep drawing that comparison because I I love the Two Towers movie as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're riding out with confidence. They're riding out with this energy um, that should be feared, quite honestly. And yeah, the company absolutely. that they take, look out, boy. Right. Aomer and Aragorn drawing drawing swords together. Yeah. I mean, that's... It's huge. It's huge. It is huge. It is. All right. Well, I mean, hopefully you guys, you know, enjoyed that chapter as much as we did. Man. I just, I, I really love um, just the setup, the feel, um, some of the the images that I got, just the the, the strength returning to this old king, yeah. you know, he's having to lead his people one more time, you know, uh, riding into to, to battle, yeah. you know, with things that, that the singers will sing about, you know, yeah. stories will be told, you know, it's just something, something awesome. Man. So, all right, uh, we've kind of covered all the cool connections. I think we we yeah. talked about some of the histories and the connections there to Errol yeah. uh, and uh, the foundation here. Some of the allusions uh, to Beowulf as well, right. Uh, yeah. There's tons in there, though, uh, a lot that I'm sure have gone oh, over my head because it's been a while since I've read Beowulf as well. Yeah, um, yeah. quite a few. Yeah. So, all right, let's dive into um, got some Bywater, Bywater Post. Post here. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's get after this. So we've got uh, uh, Chris Parks here. Uh, time to read his, his story. He says, so my Tolkien oh. story is uh, I have always been a fan of fantasy books and movies, but I fell out of reading books for a long while. I got introduced to Tolkien through the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I love the movies, and I love the Hobbit trilogy also. Over the summer, I wanted to start reading again due to me starting my college semester up in the fall to get me used to reading again. I remembered, then, I, I remembered that I picked up The Silmarillion uh, due to some YouTube video that I saw in regards to it last year and started reading that a bit, um, but then took a break and started reading Children of Hurin. Mm. Uh, both Hurin and The Silmarillion really made me appreciate the world that Tolkien created. Mm. I loved the histories. Uh, the history that Hurin and the Silmarillion brought to the Lord of the Rings books. So a few weeks ago, I picked up The Fellowship and have been reading it since. Following along with your podcast has given me the more understanding uh, of points that I've not heard before. I can see how Tolkien has put uh, aspects of his faith into his writings, and it's also what drew me uh, to enjoy uh, his works more than any others. Wow, that's great, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I love, too? Like, I, Can you remember the first time you read these stories and the excitement you had? Yeah. Um, the newness of it, the open-endedness of it, the, the, almost like you felt like you're the first one discovering these these stories. Yeah, that feeling. Yeah, man, I love that. I, I tell you what, I, I remember being almost too young to actually understand everything that was going on. So I, my imagination ran Filled in wild. The gaps. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely ran wild. Yeah. And I remember having, I remember almost not being. It was I read them when I was I was in middle school, just yeah. so young, too quick. Too I yeah. read through them so fast and it wasn't until I seen the films uh, you know and then I went back and reread them again but man it was I don't know yeah definitely something and there's even still when you do when you read these now I can my imagination is still running wild I still have moments where I'm literally in my mind I can still see the king and his counselor standing looking into the east and it just gives me hope I think you need some art bud I do I really could use that like from behind them Looking out over uh, so Edoras just into the, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I could do that. I could do that. Do, do you see what I'm seeing? Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's just such absolutely. a cool, powerful image. 
So, anyways, yeah, uh, Chris, thanks, man. That's that's beautiful. Uh, Chris, Chris has been awesome in the group, and 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 definitely uh, yes, someone we enjoy talking to. So, um, I think we might even have something else from him later on that we'll come back to. But just kind of hitting these Tolkien stories awesome. as they come up. So, yeah. All right, next is from Joshua. Uh, Josh says, "Hi guys, I recently got an ish to dive back into Lord of the Rings after getting burned out on fantasy." While Tolkien is never too far from my heart, life is busy enough to distract me from time to time. As I, mm-hmm. Same here, mm-hmm. brother. As I dove back into the books and immersed myself in the lore headfirst, I was trying to find a good podcast to listen to, and I stumbled upon yours. I've only listened to the first episode, so I still have a long way to go, but I appreciate your enthusiasm and your zeal to hear from listeners, so here I am. Yes, mm-hmm. fourth at Erlingus. Mm-hmm. I am uh, long-winded and do not expect for my email to be re- uh, read in your podcast. Wow. Well, guess what, well, Josh? Here it comes. But I did, uh, I did want to share my personal story, how I first fell down the Middle Earth rabbit hole. I love it, man. And nothing's too long when it's enough for us. That's so right. uh, yeah. that, that's only a good thing. Yeah. I was an avid reader as a kid, cutting my fantasy-loving teeth. I love how he worded that. On the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe after receiving the Chronicles of Narnia and a box set from a scholastic book order in the fifth grade. Oh, I'm sure you both remember the joy of ordering books at school. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. still see book orders floating around because I'm in elementary school. Yeah. Despite them being readily available at any local bookstores. <laughs> right. It's just magical, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, not long after receiving said box set, another box set was being sold via Scholastic Book Order, The Lord of the Rings. I knew nothing about it beyond the title and a relative kinship with the Chronicles of Narnia, but jumped the, mo- jumped the moment my mom offered to get it. Side note, we struggled financially for many years, so it was a big deal for me to be able to get not just a book, but a whole set of books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I didn't own many toys as a kid, but my, mom's, my mom always encouraged my reading. That is beautiful. Yeah. Unfortunately, a week or two uh, after I placed the order, my teacher came to me to tell me that not enough students ordered, I hated this, not enough students ordered books and she would not be placing the order. I was crestfallen. Crestfallen. Yeah. <laughs> How dare those illiterate slobs rob me of my joy. <laughs> she hates those kids with their video games. <laughs> In hindsight, I honestly have no idea why my mom didn't just take me to a bookstore. Uh, it's absolutely baffling to me. All that to say, I did not read The Lord of the Rings during those precious, impressionable years. Fast forward eight years, I am a freshman in college, having not yet read Lord of the Rings because as a teenager, reading for fun became an endangered species thanks to AP English assigned books, and I've stumbled onto a and I've stumbled onto a bootleg trailer for a movie based on The Lord of the Rings. I was still wholly ignorant of the plot. Under the delusion that the book ended with the destruction of the ring and the second two dealt with the aftermath, (laughs) and that trailer blew my mind. Uh, It didn't look like it was going to be a mind-blowing movie of the year, but it reminded me of the types of fantasy movies and books I read as a kid. As the release date drew closer, my anticipation began to build. On a whim, some friends and I caught a midnight preview of The Fellowship of the Ring, back when midnight showings were reserved for only the most precious of film-going experiences. Yeah. As the fellowship descended deeper into Moria, making for the bridge of Khazad-dûm, the booming chants of an all-male choir filling the theater, I distinctly remember thinking to myself, this is a very special movie. Yeah. Not an exaggeration. I literally thought that during that exact I I, I literally thought that during that exact moment. It was a uh, re- revel wow. Revelatory. Mm -hmm. Um, After the movie ended, I sat there breathlessly, wondering what in the world I had just witnessed. Was that the best movie I had ever seen? Yes. The next day, I could not stop thinking about it, and within 12 hours, I was back at the theater eager to see it again. I would go on to watch it another four times after that as I could not quench my thirst. can relate to that. Yep. My Lord of the Rings ecstasy was so intense and so apparent to everyone that my mom finally purchased the books for me that Christmas. Possible, possibly the exact same copies y'all mentioned in your first episode with covers using promo imagery from the, from the movies. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Christmas morning, uh, while everyone else was doing their Christmas thing, I was immediately reading and was instantly transported, which would be the genesis of, um, for an obsession that would last for several years. As I've aged, the obsession has dimmed, as all things do, but while the fervor of that light may have lessened, it never blew out. And every so often, I'll get the bug again. And so here I am. And this is so well written, Josh. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
To make an already lengthy email even longer, I also wanted to throw out some Tolkien-inspired music your way. First is Johann de Mies' Symphony Number no. 1, The Lord of the Rings. I actually heard this music before I ever read the books, and while it is all splendid, I, sp I particularly recommend the epic and evocative movements 1 and 5, Gandalf and Hobbits respectively. I'll have to check this out. Mm -hmm. You can find recordings on YouTube easily enough. Uh, my second recommendation is for the German power metal band Blind Guardian. Sweet. Uh, it may not be your cup of tea musically. Wow. But did you hear what my voice just did? Yeah. It may That's not great. be your cup of tea musically, but check out their song Lord of the Rings, an acoustic ballad uh, that will have your imagination soaring. If you, fi if you find you enjoy that, then you, then you may want to... Sorry, guys. <laughs> If you find you enjoy that, then you may want to listen to Nightfall in Middle Earth, a concept album based on the Silmarillion. Holy cow. Wow, that'd be cool. Hope you enjoy. Sorry for those uh, far <laughs> for Farsies, Farsies. Sorry for, for being so long-winded. I look forward to listening to more of your podcast <laughs> as I continue uh, my, my perpetual, perpetual reread. reread. Together. Care. Ready? Take care. Take care. Joshua, Joshua Fort, Fort Worth, Worth Texas. Texas. Thanks for helping yeah. me as... You're welcome. Man, the awesome story. Uh, so well written. So well written. That was incredible. Um, yeah. Sucked me right in. Yep. Tractor beam. Um, awesome, and, and, and really cool to hear your passion for reading, man, even as a even as a kid. That's awesome. Books over toys. It's the way to go. Yeah, that actually reminded me of uh, a children's book, where, where the Wild Things Are, or right? Yeah. Uh, the idea that like your imagination can really just take you anywhere. Oh, absolutely, you know, it's why. the greatest gift we have, my friend. Yeah, yeah. All right, beautiful. Okay, um, do some strawberries with crying. Yeah, uh, you're assigned with giving Grima a makeover. Where do you start? What do you change? What do you keep? Well, I think keep... queer eye. Okay, get okay. into your queer eye mind. Got it. You're okay. Jonathan. You're tan. I am. You know. Yep, I'm ready to go. Okay, so here we go. I would. Uh, I would, I'd keep the posture, like the the, the laying on the on the, on oh, the DS, oh, oh, you know. The, okay. He's got some confidence, man. He's, he's you gonna all, unbutton a couple buttons. Yeah, or? he's all stretched oh, okay, out there okay, in front okay. of the you know King Theoden, just doing his yeah, thing. You know dog, what I'm saying? Yeah, dog. Mm. You no, know, <laughs> he did. He had some swag and some confidence. Yeah, Awen's there. back there looking at him. You know, just the lusty know, eyes. Stuff, 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 something's happening. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I would feelings. keep that. I would okay. keep that that vibe. Okay. Um, I would maybe tone down. Some of the, uh, oftentimes if you read the descriptions, he had the half eye looked like the half, like his, can you see what I'm doing right now? Kind of like, yeah, just open your eyes, son. Like kind of open your eyes a little bit. Half man. baked, I think is what it's you're going for. That's what it for. looked like. Cause he had like, his eyes were like, he was looking out for, it's just weird. I don't understand. Maybe smoke, what's going on. Lack of confidence. Maybe too maybe. much confidence. I don't, I cannot, how, how do you even see like that? It's kind of like a, a Brad Pitt look. You ever seen uh, him? His eyes are always squinty. I just. Is it squinty or is it, it feels like the lids are very much like they're not squint. He's not squinting, but like they're kind of like these I half lidded. I didn't get that, but yeah, yeah um, I got it. Okay. Just so you All know. Right. So maybe some, even some mascara on there could. Something, some tacky tack to, to hold the eyes open a little bit. Maybe some, <laughs> some coffee. Something, maybe man. some coffee. I don't know what's going on. Get them away from Saruman. Yeah. Bad influence. Um, I would definitely keep the black color palette, the dark color scheme. I think that that's something you can work with. Very fashionable. Uh, probably spruce up his wardrobe a bit, though. Maybe get some you know tighter fitting clothes, more modern cuts, uh, but still black. I, I like that black. It's bold. It's very Johnny Cash. It's very you know designer artist. I give him a bold new look with his haircut, though. I, I'm thinking really something wild to yeah. accentuate that. You know, he's different. They're all much blonde. You know. Blue eyed, beautiful. Right. He's got that dark brooding look. That's right. So That's key right. in on that. Maybe some a long mohawk or I don't so, know. So or a reverse candy cane. You wouldn't just die as Oh hair, no, 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 no. Okay. We're not shying away from who he is, Ezra. Okay. okay. We're bringing out the, the better him. Um Okay. I, gotta do something with his eyes. Something. Because they're this icy color. I, I wasn't getting the whole whatever you were doing with your eyes. Uh, right. uh, I'm sure that was in there. I just didn't pick that up. Um, but I would I would really, I think, to make those icy eyes pop. Yeah. yeah. Have them grow out a nice, thick, manicured beard. I don't think he can. Dark. Now, how dare you, first of all? <laughs> I don't think he can. <laughs> how dare you? He's a okay. man of Rohan. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. 
get him a nice manicured beard, have him trim it up every week, and I think his icy blue eyes would just pop against them. Okay. So, mm-hmm. and I think in no time he'd be saying some nice words. And maybe, maybe they'd call him. Maybe. maybe they'd call him Velvet Tongue or Silk Velvet Tongue. <laughs> Velvet Tongue. You know, maybe everyone maybe would. wouldn't be so abhorred by him. Yeah, maybe. He'd be drawn. That in. was a nice thing you did there, though. That was nice. We kind of. I feel bad for Grandma, don't you? I mean, he's uh, pitiable. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, dude. I know. I guess you're just. Uh, hey, isn't it funny though? If you're, you're, you're above Gandalf, all of it, aren't you? Well, Gandalf. All the pity that they do take on different characters, and really, they let them live, even though they, they should have killed them. They let them live, but it's interesting to hear that the idea that maybe you should have, you know, maybe justice just should have been to kill him. Yeah, served. I don't know. I was All actually right. going to go with that, but I was like, "That's way less fun." Okay, <laughs> that's very dark. Because <laughs> uh, we know, yes. yeah. you know, in the end, he has a he has a pretty yep. big role to play. Yep, for sure. Share the load. All right, my friend. Well. Uh, share the load. Yeah, it's just it is what it is, guys. You know, you just yeah. go, you share it with each other. Yeah, you pass it around. Um, you whatever know, that may be. Yeah, whatever that is. Some old Toby. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, old Bill Joe's out and about passing it around. <laughs> um, no, guys, if you want to, we have more content over on uh, Patreon dot yeah. com forward slash um, Up Talking Tolkien, and uh, you guys, you guys can check it out there. There are links uh, in the show notes here um, at, in the description of the podcast. You know, there's also our Facebook group, you guys can check out there. So we've had we've added some new tiers, some cool stuff there, just for um, some live appendice episodes. We've got some folks coming on to do those. Uh, Goldberry's doing her thing, you yeah. know, uh, interviewing, um, taking, getting the questions we we back from our our patrons, yeah. and uh, yeah, so some just some cool stuff, and it, it helps uh, definitely. We want to travel more. We want to do meetups with you guys, and and we'd love to be able to to do that. Uh, those things kind of you know cost uh, a little bit of money. There's travel expenses and. And stuff we want to do, we want to do more. We, we, yeah. we really do, and oftentimes, a lot of times, that all goes back into you guys or us traveling and doing more. So um, we're pretty uh, open and honest about where all that's going. So, and a lot of you have have supported us and even uh, increased your support, and uh, we're blown away by it, guys. We're eternally grateful. It's never yeah. something that's expected, but it is um, definitely appreciated and honored. So, and we feel honored by you guys. So, thank you for. You know, all the ways you express your love to us. We hope that you feel just as loved by us because you guys mean the world to us. And this book club, man, I tell you what, has it's turned into something pretty special. Yeah. And it's a source of joy for us. Uh, you know, we feel great responsibility to always bring our best to you and to provide you with extras and to provide you with bonuses. Yeah. Um, but it's really a source of uh, joy. It's a great outlet. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, friends that, I never thought I'd gain. We have, you know, it's just it's just amazing how how a, a common interest can bring so many people together, and, yeah. and you can form those bonds. So, I mean, all of you, we 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 appreciate, you know, we appreciate the friendship and the journey. Honestly, being a, being a, a true fellowship, it's pretty incredible. It is, guys. We had a really good conversation before we started the show, just with some of our uh, patrons, book club members, different folks, and in, in Discord, and so. Uh, that's been a lot of a, a lot of fun. We're gonna try to make those announcements a little sooner. I know sometimes we don't always announce them ahead of time, but um, life's crazy, and so we're not always on a set schedule. We're typically every Friday night uh, we're recording, and then we release on Sunday. But uh, yeah, we'll kind of keep you guys posted on 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 those going forward. But I did, I did want to mention too, just that it is a, it is a a great joy, I guess, that I have when I read the I'm rereading this one of the greatest works. Uh, out there, I'm getting sure. to do it with um, with with all of you, my friends. Yep. You know, we start the show off that way. Yeah. Uh, j- just we want you to know that um, that you are our friends, and that you know, yeah, we're we're glad to have you along the way. Yep, absolutely. And I just I love the visions. I love those. I I want to be. I want my counselor standing next to me. You know, yeah. looking into the east and 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 helping me prepare for what's what's to come. You we know? got a damn big mountain, don't we? We do. A lot of people on it. A lot of stuff going on, man. And yeah, we got a lot of people surrounding yeah. us there. And, uh, you know, our doom's going to come one of these days, yeah. you know, and, and I want true you that. by my side, man. True that, bro. I want, I want to ride. I want that Dang, horn to, to, man. To, to sound and I, and I want to, you know, fourth <laughs> upper ring us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So anyways, you guys I'm, are awesome. You guys yeah, are awesome. Love Thank love you it. so much. Um, yep. wow. That time, huh? It is time <clears> for <throat> our, uh, weekly well wishes, formerly Fortnite farewells. Uh, we want to thank you for, you know, climbing the hill with us. Uh, our next episode will be swinging our swords right into chapter 7 of book 3, Helms Deep. I can't believe we're there already. I know. It's crazy. 
Uh, if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a shadow fax. We'll see you in a hobby fortnight. Remember, Frodo. Frodo.